Hello, everyone. Good evening. Time for one last Origami King stream before the weekend's over. And then uh, I'll be taking tomorrow off. I'll be doing DCU online on Tuesday and Thursday, with the days in between, obviously. Taking the time off, and uh, I probably just do Friday and Saturday. I don't know. We'll see how well the numbers are for today to see if I want to continue to do Sunday or not. I don't know. We'll see in the future. This is all temporary, obviously. Like, I have, uh, I'm, uh, keeping up with whatever works out. This is still a fairly new channel. Only been around a couple months, two or three. So, I'm still very much in the process of, uh, adjusting and changing as needed. So let me know if there's anything you see that you think could be better or any other comments you might have, let me know. I'll definitely, definitely change things as I go to make sure that this is the best channel it can be because I want it to be entertaining. I want it to be something that people will want to watch and I think that can certainly be accomplished if I keep working on it. Excuse me, my mouth is a little dry. Trying not to drink so much water. Because, like, I know most people, it's like, I need to drink more water. But, like, no. I I got this new bottle, which is, like, a lot bigger than my last one. And it's just, I don't know what it is, but something about this sport top, like, me makes it so much easier to, like, drink. So I'm just having a, uh, having a hard time not over-drinking and getting super bloated. So I'm just focusing on keeping it level and also not completely throwing out my voice all the time from shouting but considering what Andrew has said about this game it might get pretty hard and at which point I will be probably shouting quite a bit all right here we go the rapids so oh no oh that's very sluggish oh geez all right well there's some coins so let's line up for those at least Ooh. On the streamers just hanging out like that's nice. That's a nice little ambient thing. Oh, oh no, I'm not going for that. That's a trap. I I know. I know what what kind of trap you're trying to pull. Oh, jump and ooh, out of the way. Shit. Ah damn it. Ah the confetti covered up that little outcropping. So I ended up hitting it. Ooh, careful. Whoa. Oh, jeez. Nope. Nope. Right, it throws me off because I'm thinking of the boat as going left and right, but in reality, it's going up and down. Man, Bob is so chill right there. Straight chillin'. Oh, man. Oh, I, I do like him a lot. Especially, I did see Coco play through a bit more of this, so I saw more of his story, and you know what? It's definitely annoying by American standards, but by a lot of Japanese stories that I've seen, like, this is a lot more, uh, a more common. But come on, come on, go, go. Can I pause? I cannot pause. Okay, hopefully Andrew does not come into the call. Ah, oh, damn it, I missed him. Oh, I missed the good ones. Um, I'm trying to keep towards the top, because I remember watching Coco do this, and there's, like, one specific huge bottomless hit thing that uh, she missed because it's it comes out of nowhere behind like a huge outcropping oh my god oh my god the rocks I'm doing all right I'm doing all right here Ooh, oh god I need that confetti bag Ooh, oh, oh. oh man this is weird it's kind of like a racing game but it's a uh, more sideways shit ah Oh, you got me. Or, ooh, actually, I want to go that way. So I can get that hole. There we go. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Oh. oh my god, I almost... I almost slammed right into that. Holy shit. Fuck, I did slam right into that. Come on, let me through. Let me through. Ooh. Oh, uh, ah. Nice. Uh-oh, oh, oh shit, yeah, I gotta watch out for these fucking little bulls. They're nuts. I mean, okay, they're just like any of the other obstacles, but, like, they're just obscenely, like, uh, 
long cutscenes to deal with. Ooh, that's a trap. I don't... Whoa. No, 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 no. Ooh. Shit. Oh, God. I've taken a lot of damage. Well, we'll see how this goes. Uh, uh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Give me that heart. Give me that heart. Yes. All right. Ooh. Need that heart. Shit. 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 Oh, God. Oh, God. Can't get too close. Okay. I just got more confetti, so I'm good there. Hmm. Hmm. Mm, watch out, watch out. Then we're gonna kinda whoa, whoa, we're gonna use this to zoop around. Zoop around, I wanna get up in there. Come on! Ah oh, damn it. Nope. I would have had to gone around the other way to get in there. Oh my god. Oh my god, no. No! No! Okay. Well, I guess I'm doing this one again in the future here. Watch out. Watch out. Okay, okay, careful, careful. Down the down the, 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 the flume. There we go. Did I do it? Oh god, there's a hole in the boat. That's not good. Ooh. Um. Well, let me move. So, oh no. Okay, I did it. There. There. There is Andrew. Hello. Hey. Ah, I just did the uh, River Rapids bit. It doesn't let you pause, so sorry for not answering sooner. No, that's fine. How did you enjoy that? Oh, that was fun. I liked that a lot. I... It, it was. It confused my brain because I kept thinking, like, left and right, right? Because that's the way they're pointing, but it's it's up and down. I hate it. Really? I fucking hate it. Oh, come on. It's not that bad. I don't like that kind of gameplay, like, mm. at all. I mean, it's basically just like uh, uh, a racing game, but with uh, instead of the obstacles being other drivers, the obstacles are uh, natural things. I don't like racing games. Not any of them? No. Can't even enjoy a, a, a light Mario Kart? No. Mm. Fucking hate it. Oh man. So. So. You're still, uh, you're still playing this, huh? Mm. God, you're so behind. Listen, I'm only playing on stream. I could like make another account to just continue playing off stream, but I don't want to. Uh, don't want to get too spoiled. Yeah. Uh, get up here, I guess. Yeah. So I, I went back and started playing a little bit to see if I could get all the toads. Mmm. Yeah. And 100% them. Mm hmm. Uh, fucking no, you can't. I fucking. I can't. I can't. Really? Because Coco's been going back and doing that. Um. We're, okay. With whistle, or Whispering Woods and whatnot? Yeah. I'm stuck at 91%, and the bell does not ding. Oh, Nothing. yeah. Coco's been stuck at that too, I think. I don't know if she found the last one, but like, yeah, there's something. The, the last one is hidden somewhere deep down. Oh, I recommend buying the Royal Pass here. Yeah, I saw Coco play a little bit of this part, and the Royal Pass definitely seemed more helpful. Um, yeah, no, fucking, fuck no, I can't. I can't. Hmm. Like, royalty. 9800? I can do 9800, no problem. Well, that's because, hey, er, well, let me see. you're a crazy bitch. Listen. Listen to me. I but feel like I should so go good. back. I feel, I think uh, I should go back and, like, get more accessories, because I still only have the two. Mm, yeah, I'll do that. I got that fucking song stuck in my head. Oh, what song is so, it? That one is like, hey. You're a crazy bench punch, you fuck so good I'm on top of it when I dream. I'm doing you all night. That one. Uh I might know that one. I'm not super familiar. Buck Cherry. Buck Cherry. Buck Cherry 2005. Damn. What other one did they do? That name sounds really familiar. God, they they did a couple, but like nothing good. Hmm. 
but I we are playing Z Bench Bunch and let, so there's two versions of the song. Mm -hmm. Crazy bitch is fine, but they changed the line. You blank so good. I'm on top of it. Mm-hmm. Because in the radio edit, it's but you look so good. I'm on top of it when I dream. I'm doing you all night. And it fucking sounds like somebody doing a Donnie Baker impression from the Bob and Tom show. Mm. Like all the time, like singing. And it's awful. Like I fucking, I hate it. I really hate it. <laughs> yeah. And, well, that uh, was like for a time, that was like a really common way to sing. I well, think. it's like nasally and deep. Like if Jim Neighbors did like. It sounds like crap. uh, what's the one? Uh, word up. Word up. Everybody say. Yeah, it's that same yeah. like hyper nasal. Yeah. Put your hands in the air like you don't care. Alright, let me see if I found the accessory guy for this area. I'm just taking this time to, like, level grind my character for the next game we're playing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do all, pretty much all of that on stream. I mean, there might be, if we get really deep into it, I'll probably, uh take the time to grind off screen but uh I mean see. it's not a bad act. you'll reach the max level pretty quick mm. and so like it it's built with the implied you know thing that oh you'll work with people to right know. well that's the thing too there's like there's different parts of an MMO where they try and balance solo play with the multiplayer because the multiplayer is the core conceit but they still want people to keep playing even when they can't get with friends to play more yeah well they fucked that up with this one yeah like this one is very much a uh case of uh you, like at a certain point you're okay because mm -hmm. you can level grind high enough to deal with the bosses or whatever of each area right but then you really hit a point where you're just like yeah I did find no it. I am as strong as I can be and I need help and I am not like until I actually streamed it on my channel for the first couple times I could not like because I don't have friends who played this Mm. And I don't like making friends in game uh, at first. Sure. Um, especially because for a long time, I had no way of communicating with people in game. Like, I okay. had no microphone or headset or anything. Oh, yeah. That can, that can make things very difficult. Because, you know, until the PS4 era or the era of Discord, uh, there was no cheap way to do that like you had to buy a fancy headset that was proprietary to your console it could be third party but heaven help you if it was anything other than uh for your console because it had some weird input on the bottom right i mean there was so, like that was the thing that i really love about the ps4 is that you can literally just plug like a set of standard um Set yeah, microphone. standard. Yeah. Like, even like just a, a, it's like the standard Apple headphones with the little shitty yeah. microphone. Like it won't sound good, but like it, it'll get you talking. I mean, you can go to Five Below and get a set. Yeah, I mean, the the thing with headsets too is you got to remember comfort, because like no matter, it, even if you don't care about uh, sound quality, like if you're planning on playing for more than an hour. Some of those headsets are just gonna dig into your your ears if they're an over the ear, or they'll just like start mashing, mashing all over your head with a cheap like strap. It's it can be annoying. Um, Five Below has very decent padded ones. Hmm. Mine. Uh, hold on, let me take them off so I can see what mine are. That's a cobra head. 
Be excellent. B E E X C L L E N T. Um, hmm. That's right. the brand I got. I got them on Amazon. They're, they're good. Uh, they do what I need. Sure. Um, it's so weird. I'm playing the game on my Switch right now. Right. With my PS4 controller. Like that's, that never doesn't feel weird to me. Yeah. But I do find it funny. I'm, I'm riding on a rail line that is a suspended rail so the above portion is the track right. and the train rides below it and so they have like a chain link or like a grate on the top to keep people from falling between the tracks at the top mm. but um at, I'm flying along at such an angle that I can see the track in front of me a good ways Right. And it only, like, generates the track a couple of panels ahead. Oh, So no. I can literally see the lines of the track generating as I'm flying along. Oh, that's interesting. I can't capture video for this game, so I can show you. Oh, okay. I can do a couple of screenshots. So it's... No, it's one of those. I am annoyed by that, because, like, there's really genuinely no reason for it other than I don't know copyright protection I guess but it's like a single short clip that shows off your game is more than anything going to be free advertising yeah but it could be like spoiler stuff or something I guess I don't know I don't know, I don't know about that I don't know about that people being spoiled on things I don't know no, about that me. I don't know about that. All I'm right. Back where I started. Got got some more. I'm trying to find somewhere a little stronger for me to level up so that I can um. Mm, yeah. You know, level grind a little more easily. Oh, totally. That's something I noticed with this is that um. The the bosses are randomized. But the regular, like, fights you do aren't randomized. Like, each time you go into a fight with a specific Goomba in a specific place, it will be the same layout. So there's probably, like, a spot where it has an optimal, super easy to line up situation while still being very, uh... It's still being, like, difficult enough to give you a decent amount of... Uh, benefits, but at the same time, there's no XP, so really, all you're getting is coins. So this is the part of the game where um, you have to do something specific mm -hmm. after a point to continue. Right. You'll be looking for a key, I think. Yeah, a key. And to get the thing you need, you need a bunch. Like you need a bunch of stuff, basically. And it's just one of those situations where, oh, yeah, you gotta do a lot of work to find a hidden thing. And it's so fucking difficult. I just want to see if you can find it. And then I will give you to the point where you're willing to quit the game before I'll tell you where it is. Mm. Oh, hey, you should be able to follow me. That's a dick move. What? <laughs> Who's not following you? This person in the game. I'm trying to run away from a certain spot in the game so I can heal. Right. Because you heal outside of battle just automatically. Mm -hmm. God, my character is really cool. Yeah. I really love the character I've built. Get a couple pictures. Coco and I came to the conclusion that uh, bob -omb is a much much more endearing character if you think of him as a child because it's um, like yes he's being annoying but um, no he's not and they, the story will actually shit right on that mm. so um uh why can't I use the tail I just got I might it. change my weapon because this weapon sucks Maybe I have to grab a thing first. 
Let's, uh, oh, in here. Oh, you use the tail during battle. Well, yeah, but it won't let me equip it or anything. No, it's an item. Like a mushroom or a... Oh, like a fire flower. Yeah. You know, because it's a power-up. Sure. <laughs> when you create your character, I would suggest against doing um, the gun for your weapon. Why would I want to have a gun if I'm a superhero? Uh, because you kind of need, like, a weapon. Your powers are, your, like, in a fantasy MMO, your power attacks are spells. Mm -hmm. So you still have to have a weapon for regular attack. Mm. You know, like, your gun, if you go with a gun, I... It, does have my power set ability, which is fire. Sure. That just means I'm launching grenades out of a fucking assault rifle. Jesus. The AR and AR-15 stands for assault rifle. I don't think that's correct. Yeah, it is. Is that true? Is that yeah. true? People of the internet. Yeah. People of Earth. Stands for Assault Rifle 15. Wow. It must, uh... Wonder how bad the first 14 were to, uh... For that to be the one that caught on. Well, the first one was a musket. The second one was a flintlock. I don't think... I'm pretty sure that... <laughs> I don't think you could label those as... Uh, assault Rifles. At the time, they were. Well, wait, no. A flintlock well, was a, a, a fucking NRA post calling the AK or the AR-15 the uh, musket, the modern day musket. Yeah, you can. What? Who's yeah, saying yeah. This? The NRA tweeted that the other day. That's ridiculous. A modern weapon for a modern world. I mean, okay, I guess in terms of that being the most advanced thing that the average person can get a hold of, I guess. But even well, that might not be thing. true. I don't know nearly enough about guns to know if that's accurate. Here's the thing. Um, Trump's bullshit secret police thing? He's mm -hmm. not even good at that, because he's got, like, all these fucking weapons at his disposal mm -hmm. that could, like, incapacitate people from a mile away. Not even kill them, just incapacitate. Right. They have weapons... The military straight up has a, a gun that is a giant speaker that is so painful to listen to that it stops people from, like, doing anything. Like, it was designed specifically for this kind of thing. And, like, they're like, nah, we'll but, use like, the that's, ineffective... That's pretty easy to thwart, though. You can get hearing protection very cheaply. No, it's... I didn't say it hurt your ears. <laughs> hmm... It's not quite the brown no thing, but it makes you nauseated. It gives you, like, the sweats, you know? Mm, right. It, it's, it's a fucked up thing, and, like, you immediately just move out of the way. Like, I... It, it's horrible. Hmm. Because what it does, and it, it's so unique in how it works, that it sounds like I'm bullshitting when I describe it, but it absolutely works by um you you have to be standing directly in front of it for it to work if and if you're off to the side you cannot hear it like it is single directional sound that is really impressive yeah they had this they've had it for at least 13 years because i remember discussing it with my recording engineering professor in college, and his first response was, I wish we could get stuff like that in a recording studio. That sounds amazing. Oh, that'd be super useful. Yeah. And he was saying, imagine, like, how clean recordings could be if we could get that kind of technology in microphones. Yeah, because in... a, a microphone is effectively a much more sensitive speaker that's an input instead of an output. They're the exact same technology the microphone capsule and the speaker so if you were had something that was that specifically directional 
that was an input. The closest thing we have right now is like a, a shotgun mic. And they're not nearly that effective. Like they block out right. most of the outside sound, but they still will get some of it. That's the point. Like we have these things that we can turn into weapons, but it would be much more useful in other industries that don't hurt civilians and exactly. innocent people. Exactly. And that's the kind of thing where that's the kind of thing that irritates the shit out of me is we have these non-lethal and physically non-destructive weapons and we're just like but what if it just hear me out that was the big thing um in a uh, mystery men the tom waits character like his whole thing was making gadgets that were specifically non-lethal although he did make tornado in a can which looks like it could really fuck you up so i don't really I don't know if he was uh, the most certain that they were all uh, like that. Did you ever see Mystery Men? Plenty of times. Okay, I figured. Um, did you ever read the comic it's based on, Flaming Carrot? Uh, I've tried. I can't find it. That's what I was talking about with... Um, uh, I was talking about it with 1 over 2 in a chat. Uh... I think it was one over two, um, but he said that uh, it was it, it wasn't tied enough into the comic to really give a boost to the sales. So even though it was technically based on that, there was not a ton of promotional material pointing out that that's what that was. Like I only knew about it because the DVD had like a single extra that was just a single static screen with a wall of text and a single picture of the flaming carrot. Oh god, I have a distressed citizen oh boy. on a building. Oh boy. What are you gonna do? I pushed him off. Is the green, <laughs> is the green goblet in disguise? Well, no, like, Don't straight up. That grandma. Uh, if you're a villain, what you do is you push people off the buildings. I mean, that's one thing, um, I've played a little bit of infamous Second Son <laughs> on the villain path. And the mm. thing is, it's fucking immensely, incredibly easy to play that game on the villain path. Because, yeah. like, all you gotta do is walk down the street and fucking punch people in the head. Yeah. And, like, it, it, just building up any kind of points. But at the same time, it makes you feel fucking awful. Because you're like, yeah. what do I, like, Do am I just gonna fucking smack random people? And it's like... It just feel, it feels bad. Tell me, you've lived in Seattle. Yes. And played in from the second son. Yes. How wildly off is that? It's oh god, I I plan to play like, it at it some point. It gets the vibe, but it is it is not like uh, some games where it is clearly like the lovingly recreated. Well, that's the thing too, is that it's pretty much just downtown Seattle. Um, Even then. But, but the thing is, like, yeah, uh, technically all of those neighborhoods are real neighborhoods in Seattle. But they're skewed very greatly. Um, so it's, uh, it's it's hard to describe without seeing the map. But I'm definitely going to stream it at some point And just rant about how completely off the map is. But it's like, it's generally the same landmarks in the right neighborhoods and kind of the right places, but it's all just like shuffled around and like compressed heavily. Like the entire map for that game is effectively just like what Queen Anne is in Seattle. And Queen Anne is one of the neighborhoods in that. Yeah, we were shown Queen Anne when we went up and I was like, this is nice, I don't wanna live here. Oh yeah, no, that's like the, the bougie hipster area. Like, Ballard is also kind of hipstery, but it's more hippie than it is hipstery. Um, so... It's the more Andrew kind of hipster, is what you mean? Yeah, basically. Like, I, I can understand why you like it. Fremont is also pretty cool in that way. Um, but they're, like, right next to each other. So if you if you get a place in one, you'll be able to just walk over to the other. They're only a few blocks apart. And honestly, like, the bus system's so great that, like, getting anywhere in the city only takes, like, a couple hours at the very most. 
Except, except in fucking football season, because then, basically everything is massive traffic and takes twice as long to get fucking anywhere. Fucking hate the Seahawks. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I misunderstood what I was looking at. Oh? I'm looking at the power sets and all that that you can buy. Mm-hmm. The thing I was looking at was a bundle where it's the power set and some storylines. The powers alone are around five bucks. Oh. Well, let me see. Hold on. That's 600, so I'd need... Yeah, about ten bucks. Real world money? Yeah. Yeah, so you can only buy it in increments of 5, or 10, or 20, or 45, or 85. Oh, of course. That's how they always and do so it. And so I'm looking at it right now. And if I wanted the Rage Power Set, which, oh yeah, that's 600. But I can only buy in increments of 500. So it's 500 for 5 bucks, 1,000 for 10 bucks, etc. And so I'm like, oh, so I'd have to pay $10 for the Rage Power Set or for the uh, Light Power Set, which is what I got for free previously. But with the $85 thing, you got um, not just the Power Set, but storylines to go with it. Mm, right. So it's not anything worth going after what level am i at i can't because i've been fighting yeah what level are you at and what is the level cap i'm curious the cap is uh, last time i played 33 the 33 why so specific Fuck if I know, because that's what I was at, and I could not level up anymore. Hmm. Uh, oh, and here's I'm a question, because I'm, uh, I'm about to get it, but when you were in the Shogun Stodi Studios, did you get the cherry petal accessory? Yeah! Hell yeah. Coco definitely, like, immediately. I just had to, like, do a, a quick little bit of grinding to get it here, but fuck yeah, it looks so good. Crazy, bitch. Where is it? Like, there it, is. it sounded like Jim Neighbors. Like, you know who that was? Um, hmm. Played Gomer Pyle. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, golly, sorry, the car. Like that, motherfucker. Yeah, he had a little bit more in the back. Of the golly. Yeah, it's it. Shazam, Shazam, Yeah, there Shazam. you go. Now you're getting it. Yeah. Well, it's, you gotta, you gotta give it a little bit of a, a little bit of Kermit, but he's a little bit deeper than that. So I played him for Maddie last night for the first time. Yeah. Because like the song came up, and um, she was, I was like, now do you want to hear him sing? She's oh, like, I don't. Good. <laughs> I don't think She's I've like, ever heard him sing. He is actually an incredible singer. Really. Yeah, Jim Neighbors is an amazing singer. Like, you gotta remember, Gomer Pyle is a character, a sure. voice he does. But Jim Neighbors, like, look him up singing The Impossible Dream. Hmm. It, and you're like, this is not the same guy. Like, that's impossible. I refuse to accept it, you know? Yeah. But no, he's just an amazing singer. <laughs> so the question but is, like, did he actually speak like that, or was that a put-on voice? It was a affectation for the character. Okay. Huh, I wonder like, what he actually That was not his speaking like. voice. Uh... 1960s closeted gay man? He probably tried to sound as much like his actual character voice. Oh, was he gay? Uh, I never... Oh, yeah, never he was that. extremely gay. Yeah, hmm. he was very gay. Good for him. Yeah. Uh, wait. Shit, I think I did that wrong. Uh... Along with Rock Hudson and handful of others to be fine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got it. Fuck. I got a wannabe Robin Superman trying to hit me, but I'm not on PvP. Mm. Fucking... 
<laughs> Chud. You know, like, Chud. he's a crazy bench, but he looks all good. Cut. That fucking has been stuck in my head ever since I fucking remembered it. Wait a minute. Have you actually seen Chud? Because I've heard the term used quite a bit, and I know what it's about. I've read the Wikipedia article and shit, but I don't think I've met a oh, lot of people I'm using actually... it not in relation to the movie. Okay, fair enough. The movie... I'm using it as a... Uh, just derogatory. Sure. Because... Like, that's the problem with derogatory phrases, is... They're all either sexist or racist, so you don't really have any good ones. Yeah. That's very true. And so, like, Chud? No one has been historically held down by the word Chud. Not it's yet. It's not sexist. I doubt that the MAGA crowd is ever going to be held down. <laughs> like, unless you hear their side of it. Like, I mean, they'll you know, be held having to wear a mask. They'll be or... held down, which is to say, everybody else will be brought up closer to their level. Which, instead of seeing that as everything is getting overall better, instead they see that as, no, we're getting put down. It sucks. We can't do this. Well, then lift yourself up by your fucking bootstraps again. Hmm, yes. Which, as Cody Johnston points out, was meant to be a fucking, like, ridiculous phrase. Meant to point out the ridiculousness of... You can make it to the top on your own merit instead of everyone needs help getting where they need to be in life. Like, yeah, and everybody. everybody's just like, oh, you can do this. It's like, no, that's not what the American dream is. Like, and that's why so many people are really pissed right now because they've spent the past 30 years building up their bunker full of MREs and fucking weaponry because when the apocalypse comes, it's going to be every man for himself. And now they've got an apocalypse where the best way to, like, fight it is to work together and wear a fucking mask and they've been lied yeah, to and rambo is, they they want it to be a zombie apocalypse where they're just like allowed to do whatever they want and whoever is biggest and strongest is the alpha well, male who survives but like that's not what it is it's like an actual I watch apocalypse Mad Max. I should get to shoot people. Like, yeah it's no, an actual you... apocalypse which is to say everybody works together and we get through it like they happen it's they actually happen more like the lego movie Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team, but they're making it more like everything is awful. Everything sucks because of COVID-19. Like, fucking... Yeah. God, I really hate the kind of people that look forward to collapse of society so they can... Like, let... it's, it's an interesting concept, like, thought experiment of, like, what would you do? You know, it's, it's, it's an interesting fantasy, but, like... Some people take it too far, and are like, "No, watching... it's gonna, it's gonna happen." So I have to be fucking ready. In reality, the full like world-ending apocalypse is probably not going to be something that you can fight against. It'll be like so... a super volcano going off, and then everybody's just fucking dead. Yeah, I was watching back in the day, like a couple decades ago. I watched a Discovery Channel show where they were like. We're going to create, I think it was this really short-lived, but really interesting one, where uh, they had like a weapons engineer uh, with like a wild ass, if anybody knows this one, please get a hold of us and let us know what it is. This dude had a big bushy ass mustache, but he was this tall lanky son bitch. And then his, the, the host of the show was this like short bald man would do like a minimum amount of research on a subject of like weaponry mm -hmm. and so like what i remember is him talking about uh samurai swords right and seeing if like they would study the weapon and how it was traditionally used and see if they could improve upon the concept uh behind the principles of the weapon huh and, and what, like, what was this called again i don't know that's why i'm asking yeah is it on for... youtube I don't know. It's been decades. It's Decade, been decade. Probably not YouTube then. Um, it was on Discovery, a long Discovery. time ago. Because it sounds, and, it sounds like if fucking uh, uh, Deadliest Warrior was like good. Kinda, yeah. It, like cross Deadliest Warrior with like MythBusters. Yeah, exactly. And, Which is what I wanted I, out of Deadliest Warrior. 
and a not Adam Savage. <laughs> to be clear, so, to be clear, I still watched the fuck out of um out of Deadliest Warrior if just because it was the best we had of that. But it just yeah, it just wasn't. This that was good. either Discovery or History. It was one of those. <laughs> right. Um, because at the time they were really homogenous and similar, with the exception yeah. of like uh the Nostradamus documentaries and the Mythbusters on the Discovery Channel instead. But right. um I just remember like they were talking about how the samurai would like practice with the sword until it was just muscle memory and not even like oh they're not even thinking when they swing it's just muscle memory and the like it, the way the engineer like clarified that for his own understanding was he said so it's not a signal going from here to here pointing at his brain to his hand he said it's from here to here and he points like from his shoulder to his hand and the, the host is like exactly and he goes brilliant <laughs> and i'm like you want to be adam savage so yeah. fucking bad like and the, it was like this short british bald guy who um was the host and i swear i've seen him on other stuff i just can't think of like a specific thing and i swear to god i wish i could remember the name of the show because i watched it i liked it but it was exceptionally like it did not hit whatever stride it was going for and so um it was just looked at as oh not good like it needed a couple of seasons to really get going Oh, if you look back at Mythbusters, the first season was good, but it got a lot better when they started, like, expanding the cast and all that, so... Well, the thing with... I feel like muscle memory is kind of a misnomer, because in reality, it's just uh, the heuristics that you're building. Like, you're s slowly learning all these tiny rules of thumb, and then your brain basically circumvents any manual stuff and finds a way to just automatically go through the most optimal motions. That's why if you yeah. told someone, like if you told, ask someone who is incredibly skilled at really anything, whether it's physical or mental, and just ask them like, hey, can you just break down every step? It would probably take them a minute because they haven't thought about the full process in probably years. Yeah, in fact, watch Adam Savage do a one day build of a thing he's never done before and he's just kind of guessing at. Mm -hmm. And you'll be like, oh, yeah. When he doesn't know exactly how to build the thing, he is not in his comfort zone. Right, you but know? then he has like a set of mental tools that he uses where he knows right, but... all these different processes that can help, but he has to figure out how to combine them all. Mm -hmm. But you'll see, like one he did today, he screwed up something and had to start over because he was just like, I have no idea what I'm doing here. And like, there's a handful of like materials or new tools he'll use where he's like not familiar with it. And so he has no like experience <coughs> to draw upon for that. And it's very interesting to watch even somebody as talented as Adam Savage, who's been doing this shit since the 80s, still you know, struggles with it every now and then. And you're yeah. just like, oh, that's so cool. Let me actually, I'm going to turn up. Uh... Nah, never mind. I'll leave it at that volume. The The thing is, when you go indoors in this game, uh, the audio drops by like 5 or 10 decibels. So it gets uh, just quiet enough that it might be pretty difficult to hear on stream. But mm -hmm. if I, I drop it... If I bump it up at all, it's going to be a little too loud when I'm coming off of the stream, so... Eh, it's whatever. Um, apparently, by the way, I have escrow in this game. Escrow? I don't know what escrow is, so that's, like, fucking useless to me. I mean, escrow generally would be basically, like, uh, money that you've paid into something already? Towards something? I think I, I'm not certain. It's usually like a real estate term, and I, I have not bought a house. I don't know what escrow means. And I'm pretty sure it's just one of those words they use to confuse the average person so that they're like. I mean, it's lost. definitely it's definitely like a specific technical term for financing, but I, 
I just personally don't know. And it's it's not even necessarily that they're trying to confuse people. It's that there, it's a specific situation and a specific thing that needed a specific term. Whether or not the term intuitively makes sense, like it had a reason that they did it rather than just using another word that means effectively the same thing. I'm trying to see if I have... If I can, like, increase powers or something. Increase powers. You know what I could do? I could just go ahead and play the game. Because mm -hmm. when you come in, I can just redo parts with you. Sure. So that'll also give us a little bit of a, like, oh, here's what you gotta do. Uh, yeah, I suppose. I don't really... I don't know. Well, I, don't, I don't play MMOs, so I don't really even know what you do for the most part, other than run around and... There's a story. Eh, alright. Like, you're given yeah. missions. Uh, mission-based, okay. I got it. And, uh, the one mission leads to the next. Right. And so, uh... Oh, fuck, I can't... This mutagen is designed to turn subjects into power drain parasites. Use it on the local student body and see if they survive. Hmm. I love being a villain. Yeah, so, that's a, what I, f I figured. It's like, I'll probably want to play a hero at some point, but honestly, being a villain just seems more fun. It really is. Um, oh, this... Oh, I, could, I can get over here. Sweet. Wow. I'm at a local college. A student is on his knees begging for mercy, and I'm just, like, killing him. God damn. Oh. That's brutal. I Injecting wish... Injecting him with mutagen. That's one thing I kind of wish you could do oh, in the, the Spider-Man games. So when it said parasite mutagen, I thought it meant, like... I didn't expect it to be the Superman villain parasite. Oh. What did you do to me? The pain is unbearable. I can't take it. Oh my god. This is so fucked up. How do I... Hmm. Live without you. How I do I live. set off the shuriken game? I have the shuriken. <laughs> yeah, that's a question, isn't it? Do I... There's nothing to check? Do I hit the string? I'll put it this way. You have to find the host for the game. Oh, god damn it. Is it a toad? Yep. Fuck. But the the toad stuff is, noticed... this toad stuff isn't the worst, but it's like sometimes... Have you noticed somebody talking about, uh, oh, there's a secret employee room? Yes. I thought that was behind the chomp. No. Okay. It's not. You have to find the secret employee room. Fuck. They said it was nearby, too. Uh... That, oh, 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 for the giant turtle shell, head down, or head south. Hold on, hold on, I'm talking to some codes. Head straight south, and then west from there. Hmm. I'll tell you this, you can go straight right now to the employee room, if I told you where to look, but I'm not going to, because that's the thing that Well, I figured me... it's not going to be that uh, difficult to find, I just didn't know what the importance was. Uh, oh, it's difficult to find. That's what. That's the first, and it, it's what made me resort to looking up a walkthrough. Oh, okay. Because I know I need to use the shurikens to get the baseball, give it to the dry bones, and they'll um, give me their bone, and then I give that to the chomp. I got. I figured that out. Yeah. Uh. No, go go go! Do the uh, the giant turtle. Well, I'm just uh, trying to find the toad who mentioned the secret room. Oh, he doesn't tell you where to look. Well, no, but I, I know that that'll be the... There was one person who was like... One of the toads said, uh, I saw the people going by here. That must be around where the secret room is. So there's someone who has a hint. I just can't remember well, which here. toad it was. Let me give you a hint. Head far to the northeast of the square where we see that giant turtle shell. Right. Then head due south and then due west. You'll see a bell tower. Go through the gate. Oh yeah, those barrels that you see right there where you just threw the cherry blossoms. Yeah, no, I got, I, I got it. 
I can find my way. Bell tower. It's just gonna oh, take yeah, a minute. Yeah, go up the bell tower and ring the bell. Then the turtle will, will do the thing. Right. Maddie just brought me a firehouse uh, lemon cookie. Oh, I've never had their oh, cookies. Their fucking lemon cookie is worth a trip alone. Mmm. Okay, I like the sandwiches well enough. Um, they're they're probably the best sub sandwich you can get from a chain. Um, yeah, they are. And then By Coco, far. Coco fucking loves their mac and cheese, but it's like, oh, it's so expensive. It's like five bucks for a tiny cup. Yeah, their their lemon cookies are amazing. Their cookies are all good, mm -hmm. but their lemon cookie is a masterpiece. Mm. Like I would, like is we it, uh, it for what's what, what style of cookie is it? Is it like the flat chewy? Is it the big puffy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Big flat chewy with white chocolate chips that accent it just right. Nice. So no frosting, just the chips. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Not the kind with like the big sugar crystals on top either. Right. I'm not into those. I like. I love lemon cookies, and I'll eat any of them. But I just like this kind better. Right. So imagine like a chocolate chip cookie, but the cookie part is lemon flavored, and the mm. fucking god, it's so good. I'm not a big fan of white chocolate. I'll say it can be good in some stuff, like a white chocolate macadamia nut. Or, like, yeah, it does tend to go really well with citrus, so that might be the way to go. We already That's have... the thing about this? Mm. Um, the, ch the white chocolate is not there for flavor, it's there for accent. Accent, okay. Yeah, so it's an ingredient versus a feature. Right, right. Oh, hold on, I gotta... Cherry blossom it. Yep. Nope, can't open that yet. Gotta go around this way. It's weird seeing some of the folded soldiers, like, uh, talking to each other. Because otherwise they're so, like, mindless. So you remember how Bowser couldn't unfold? And how you're told that the folded soldiers can't or they would die? Uh, I didn't realize that's why they couldn't, but I can believe yeah, it. Yeah, that's why you can't rescue the folded soldiers, but you can rescue the toads. Wow, that's fucked up. This you game's know why. pretty fucking dark. Oh, it's, it gets darker. Oh my god. Hmm. Fucking yes, when see. you get comic as a side, or as a, uh, what a, whatchamacallit? It gets super fucking depressing. Oh boy. Like you start to feel bad for comic. You know, I already kind of felt bad for comic because it's just a, just a fucking yes man for a guy that does not appreciate. It's like the Waylon Smithers situation. You just feel kind of bad for him. Because he's so devoted to this dude who does not fucking care. But, um... No, the comic in this game absolutely deserves better. It's, it's really fucking depressing. Like, poor comic. Like, you actually do feel bad. Hmm. Poor comic, by the end. Um... Like, that because you and Olivia show him the only bit of kindness. Right. And you're just like, holy shit. You know, he's so henpecked. The, like, yeah. he's just like... Well, because like, Bowser is just a giant fucking child. He doesn't know what he's doing. And so he's basically just throwing comic to any whim that he can find. Well, it's like several times comic is actually, like, right about it everything mm -hmm. <laughs> he'll be like wait you're listening to me that was um why that was uh 
in the fucking second Nostalgia Critic movie. That's what Phalus's character was, basically. Was that in the Night of Suburbia? No, that's the third one. Um, okay, well, the first movie is Molossia, the, the Kickassia, where they take yeah. over Molossia in the desert. It was okay. It was more fun in premise than anything. Um, and then after that... After that, they did Suburban Nights, then to Boldly Flee. They did, like, one last one that was, like, an anthology that was, eh, whatever. Um, and the first one, technically, because they're all anniversary ones, was the Nostalgia Critic versus AVGN Battle Royale uh, video, where they just did it in, like, a hotel conference room. Um, which is fun. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. I think that one's probably the best, if just because it's short. Instead of being like five hours long like the rest of them are, it's short enough that um, it doesn't overwear any of the gags. It just it does the jokes and gets through them. A lot of references, a lot of really outdated references at this point, because like a lot of those reviewers don't do that, those jokes anymore. Get the fuck out of here, Sniffits. Stop it. Stop. So, okay, eat. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I see. I see where it is. Aha. If you jump on those barrels, uh, there's a thing above it. Thing above it? Like the thing next to the toad. Oh, that? Yeah, I had. If you, yeah, the thing next to the toad. There's a, a, a invisible block above it. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll run also, back this is that. another place where I can't find all the toads because the bell won't ring. Hmm. Like this is what I was doing when we started streaming. I was just like, you know, I've beat the game, I've seen the ending, unless there's like a super awesome... I have a theory. I you remember in Toad Town, there's that, like, mansion where there's a chest, you can't jump the gap? Um, I don't think I've explored it that much yet. Yes, you did, because oh, I told you, you can't... Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't consider that a mansion, it's just like a two-story, like... No, they call part. it a mansion. Really? Like, that's what yeah. that's what passes for mansion? Yeah. Alright. Um... So, uh, you're told, uh, oh, you can't get that until after you've gotten the, um, get what? You have to rescue a specific toad out in the desert. For, for what? Oh, the, the for the, the chest? Yeah. Shit. I mean, I so get, I'm I guessing theorize? most of Toad Town doesn't open until you get through most of it. Well, that's the last thing right now that you can't do hmm. in Toad Town. Like, uh, after you finish the desert, you're pretty, you've pretty much opened all of Toad Town. Right. And so I'm like, well, fuck, you know, what the hell? Because I'm like, still at 91% in the Whispering Woods. So I theorize, you know that wooden log cabin at the end of the game? Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, you want to grab all or, three well, of those. Well, no, I don't. I don't know that log cabin. Or not actually. at the end of the game. At the end of Whispering Woods. Uh, yes, the the picnic. And, no, yeah. that's not the picnic spot. That's uh the camping spot. Yeah, and how every time you try to go in the house, he's like, "My owner hasn't been around for a long time." I theorize that he, he, the owner of the house lives somewhere else, or is like crumpled up somewhere else. So you have to find him. And Holy then shit. once you then The once fucking you line, him, the line he just had of just, we have all these masks, do whatever you want with them. I'm not paid enough, well, well enough to stop you. You want to listen to the audio here. Oh, God damn it. You should have told me beforehand, because I've already, like, halfway through this bit. Well, you definitely want to for the Samus mask. Okay, hold on. I will mute you for a second so that I can hear that. Alright. I can still hear you, but the stream can't. So. Uh. Because if I had the stream going, then it would just loop back the monitor. I was listening, so let me turn this. There's the audio. Okay. <clears throat> let me check the Samus mask.
that's fun. That's fun. I, I think, honestly, um, you talked about how there was a lot of really specific references that they wouldn't, that, like, kids wouldn't get and stuff. But I honestly feel like there are a lot of really silly kids' jokes in here, so I think it's more the kids' movie method of having, like, having, like, Start jokes the that the adults, adults yeah, the ad adults can get the, like, deep references and the kids So Maddie enjoy, looked whatever. up, uh, the wiki on this and mm -hmm. found that, uh, pretty much everyone agreed with, like, you and me, like, seems tonally lost, like, boss battles are exceedingly hard, like, it's made for adults, but right. then, like, the hand-holding is exceedingly childlike, yeah. like, it's made for kids, so, and, like, they s described the thing as, it would be understanding how people would get very frustrated with the battle in this game very quickly. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it fucking really is frustrating, <laughs> a battle in this game, very quickly. Like, I've played a lot of games, I've played a lot of bad games, you know, I'm... I'm not denying that I've played some crap in my day, but right. Jesus Christ, some the like, it's like I was saying, it's like a manic depressive episode. Hmm. Yeah. But it, it really is. It feels it like it just doesn't. It it wants to appeal to everybody, and by doing so, just annoys everybody else. I mean, have difficulty settings, you know? Yeah. Like it, that's. It, 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 Genuinely, just like let me turn off the tutorial cutscenes. Like you can keep the cutscenes that have Olivia, but just like let me turn off her telling me how to do shit. Especially if I want to play this again, those opening bits are gonna be fucking unbearable because I'll have yeah. like the first ten fights where I'm being told in such explicit detail how to do everything. Being able to turn that off would make it so much more enjoyable. Yeah. Or just have her commentary turned off. Oh, there's a fucking fourth wall breaking line later that I won't spoil. Mm. But, like, there's literally, like, a point where you find Bowser again and he just mocks the developers. And I'm just like... Wow. We get it. You know you're in a video game. I mean, that was something with... Uh... We'll hold that thought. I'm going to take a quick biology break, um, but I have something to say about that point specifically. I'll BRB, folks. You muted me or not, Iggy, so I... 
Oh, yeah, made sorry. The point that I, I, was about to make. I, I did for safety. I forgot to ask. Um, um, so the question, or the thing was, you were going to make a comment about fourth wall breaking commentary. Yes. Yes, that was the thing. Like you can make that work, but when you're the, the when you're the first um, entry into a series on like a new console under a new developer, in the case that this is way forward and all that, um, uh, the um, uh, that can be very off-putting to have this self-deprecating humor, and that's one the thing that made me immediately stop Banjo Kazooie nuts and bolts during the. Be opening like cutscenes is that they were just so cruelly self-deprecating and th they just talk shit on the old games and it's like why would you do that the people who are buying your game are people who know the name recognition and want to play it because of the property that you're making clearly so why would you talk shit on the property that they all love that's a quick way to make them hate your fucking game so this happens once near the end. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, not that with, bad. with nuts and bolts, it was fucking constantly, and it was so, so frustrating. So with this one, what it does is I don't want to spoil it, but Bowser just makes a comment near the end. Sure. I mean, I'm shocked that there isn't more, since it, that's such a. Uh, popular form of comedy right now especially in like uh video games and other nerdy pursuits yeah it, it just i'm not into it yeah and the point i was making while you were gone was well what if it were you know uh uh deadpool people love deadpool and he does it all the time here's a shock that may uh upset a few people I fucking hate Deadpool. I do not like him. I've ne like I've been shown all kinds of stuff with him in it, and I do not enjoy Deadpool. Hmm. Like people tell me all the time, like you just haven't seen the right Deadpool stuff. I've seen it all. People will not fucking leave me alone about Deadpool. They think, oh, you like comedy, you like comic books and superheroes, you'll like this, right? Oh, I no. will agree, like, Deadpool is very grating in a lot of situations. Um, in all situations? Uh, well, it, in every situation. It really depends. I mean, he's basically on a gradient of tolerable to just unbearable. And I I personally do like him a lot. At least in the movies. I have not read a ton of nope. the comics. I really I... hate him in the movies. Really? Ryan Reynolds is perfect to play him, and I love Ryan Reynolds. I can't stand Deadpool. Wow. Even in that that iteration. Yep. yep. Hmm. I fucking can't stand him. Also, you only need the normal level for this. Yeah. I mean it looks like uh, that's one of the collectibles. But I'll I'll come back and do that later. I'm probably gonna take like a stream or two later on and just kinda grind out the toads and everything. I just want to make some decent amount of progress on the these first few for the opening weekend. All right, so but, I got uh, the baseball. Got to go back to the dry bones. Uh, for comedy anti-hero comics, mm -hmm. I'll go with Lobo every day of the week. Lobo's pretty solid. Um, Lobo's pretty solid. Uh. Would the mask be considered that? Yeah. Okay. Well, depends. Yeah, that's my thing. Is like, I get that he's definitely like a darker character, but like, is he even an anti-hero or is he just fully a villain in the comics? Depends. Mm. De on. When the comic was made. Hmm. Okay. So what's the when it is the the good runs versus the the ones where it's not that so much so there's mass comics bm mm -hmm. and mass comics am mm -hmm. bm is before movie 
AM is after movie. Oh, did they do the 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 like Nick Fury thing of uh making it um making the comic book version match the movie version more? Did you no, they don't even do that. Oh no. Did you ever see the mask animated series? I've seen like the first episode cuz uh it I'm just a fan that of that continuity. Oh boy. So it's like the extra cartoony kind of awkward. Uh-huh. And it follows Stanley Ipkiss as the hero. Hmm. But if you get the old Evan Dorkin issues, mm -hmm. Oh god, they're good. Yeah. If you want to go with the cartoony over the top one, get the mask meets Lobo. Okay. Or the mask meets Joker. Ooh. Where Joker wears the mask. Oh no. And this is somewhere between the animated series Joker and Arkham City Joker. Mm -hmm. Like that ultraviolet 90s era comic book Joker. Right, but it's still with like the the barest hint of the like 60s Adam West comedy. No. Like more cartoonish comedy than that. Hmm. Um, okay. A lot more sinister. Right. And then he gets the mask. Hmm. Um, there's also a comic where the Joker steals the powers of Nixia Spitalik. Mm hmm. That one's pretty fucking good. I, w wait, how does he do that? Um, he tricks Mixit Spitalik into giving them to him. Hmm. He was only supposed to get like 1% of his power. And, uh, instead, Joker takes like most of it. Oh, shit. Uh, it is pretty fucking good. Yeah. I mean, those characters are always, like, some of the most interesting in media. The the overpowered character who uh, just wants chaos. Yeah. <laughs> that's what um, Q from Star Trek, like, that's his whole thing. And they basically just adapted that into a character for My Little Pony. It's Discord, who is voiced by um, the, the same actor as Q, and which... Very intentional. John, so. John, John, uh, John Delaney, I think. Lithgow. No. God, imagine John Lithgow is cute. It'd be a very different feel. It would be good, but it'd be it'd be good in a very different way. Oh yeah. I, I'm like not quite Lord Farquaad or uh. The big, the character from Third Rock from the Sun. Mm-hmm. But, like, along those... Oh, I... Okay, I just got an email. Uh-huh. From Dale Vanoss. Re... Force a long string of capitalized letters. Okay. And Good Banks. B-E-N-K-S. Uh, I don't... I don't know about that and then, one. Message... On Sunday, July 19th, 2020, 5.46 p.m., Angela Carmichael wrote J-H-X-R-H-4-4 and N slash N-X-R-H-U. It just goes on for, like, a paragraph of text in my preview. Wow. Without me opening it. Yeah, I'm going to say uh, leave that one on unread. Um, there's only one Dan Housing. Only one. How many Danhausens you need? Here at I Discount mean, Danhausen Warehouse, we'll get you plenty of Danhausen. Top quality. Very good, very evil. Uh, some third one. I don't know. You ask him when you get him, alright? Do you know what makes me happy about Danhausen? Everything? Yeah. But, like, more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, you'll notice there's a, ch a treasure chest to the right side of the entrance, like okay. where you just got that block. You can't get it yet. Okay. You have to go through the building, 
to get those shurikens sliding back and forth. Right. You see the platform? Oh, I see it. You ride that across, so you, don't, you can't... You don't gotta worry about, like, telling me how to do most of the stuff. This is gonna be a much more casual run. I know, but marathon. I spent, like... Listen, listen. Oh. It's, it's... I appreciate it, but, like, I'll just... If if there's um something I'm stuck on, I'll ask. But for the most part, like, I, I'm, I, I figured I'm you're just... gonna get them moving, because they're on a rail. Well, I didn't see them until I finished the game and went back. Mm -hmm. Which I'm probably going to do at some point. I, I thought Maybe not 100% the, the game, but I plan to at least like get a good chunk of it done. You'll hate this. I didn't bother trying to win it. Mm -hmm. If you get through without finding Luigi, let me know, and I'll give you a hint. Sure. There's a chance you'll figure it out. You, you caught on to that fucking secret door a lot quicker than I did, so there's a good chance you'll figure out where Luigi is. Right. Let's see. Going over here. What ah, kind of life go. would that be? Oh, hi. I've Who's got like? all these fucking old ass songs stuck in my head. Clearly. God. What have you, what have you been doing? You know me. I'm a crazy bitch, but I'm a... Hmm. God. Oh, wait. Keep going. Mm. I actually did that thing where I made fun of that guy by writing a parody song making fun of him. Uh-huh. I mean, that's what a parody song should be, really. Like, um... What's that old 90s love song? It's like, your love is like a river, peaceful and deep. That one? Uh, I use that as the familiar. base. Your love is like a river, peaceful and deep. Your mm. love is like a secret that I never could keep. When I look into your eyes, I know that it's true. God must have spent a little more time on you. That one. Oh God, I hate it. <laughs> that's such a that's such a cheesy sentiment. Oh, what the fuck? Decoys. Yeah. yeah. So when you get attacked by multiples, you're like, alright, it happens on both sides. I have an idea. I'll attack the same side twice for my turn. Mm -hmm. No, they'll stay logs. Like no matter which group you attack, how many times, they stay logs. I'm gonna try out a, this tail business. Uh, it's yep. hammer shaped, so you can't. Shit. Yep, I w wasn't paying attention. Oh fuck, that's real strong though. That's that's good enough for me. Missed the timing on that. I'll just use a hammer. Take this fucker out. Whoop! Bow. Oh, nope. Holy shit! <laughs> I'm playing a nap game. Uh, where uh -huh. are you? grow weed on an island oh sure and the park ranger who works against you wants his twin brother killed oh fuck his That's twin dark. brother's a carney okay well, his twin brother's a carney and his mom loves him more oh. uh, the 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 park ranger's an asshole but like even his own mom hates him so he hunts down his long lost twin brother whom she gave up for adoption at birth Jesus. And thinks he's finally gonna gain everyone's respect because his brother's a filthy carny. And so he goes to the secret <laughs> agents that are introduced way earlier in the game mm -hmm. and asks them to refer a hitman to kill his brother. Right. And they're like, wait, your brother's a carny? We want no part of this. The one world government and the traveling carnivals have an agreement. We leave them be and they stop fucking with the recipe for those mini donuts. Wow, this is a fucking deep deep story the road is long people like Jimmy Moore he ain't heavy he's my brother what the fuck are you speaking tongues over there what's going on like there's a he's the park ranger also has a bit of a captain hook thing going on with a gator who wants to kill him oh so okay. the gator that finally captain found him thing. yeah and the gator finally catches up with him. He's like, oh, it's you. Go ahead, eat me. Really? That's it? You're not going to give me the thrill of a chase? Why do I care? 
probably won't even taste as good as Jimmy anyway. Wait, that's it. Mr. Chubbs, there's someone I would like you to meet. Okay, I'll bite. Literally and figuratively. Who? Is his meat as succulent as yours? I would have to think so. We're the same meat. Hot dang. Let's make a quick pit stop at my place. Papa's got to pick out his spices. This story is very, like, webcomic. Where it's, like, oh, cartoony, yeah. but, like, still kind of weirdly serious. Yeah. The developers actually got the license to use Cheech and Chong in another game. Oh, shit. So that's they cool. just reskinned this one. It's yeah. not as good, in my opinion. I like the original game better. I mean, the thing with Cheech and Chong is, like, if you've already heard their jokes, anything that they're adapted with is just going to be more of that. Which isn't uh, a bad thing, kinda. necessarily. I mean, I like... They're funny. They're funny, too. So dudes, I only but... like one Cheech and Chong movie, and the rest are all, like... Which one? Uh, Up in Smoke. That's, the one where they, that's like... supposed to be the classic, yeah. The one where they get the van made of weed and have to drive it, you know... Mm-hmm. Like, that's a good Wait, one. Wait, is that what the plot of that is? I thought that was just, like, one scene in one of the movies. No, that's the plot of the movie. They gotta get that... Like, the one girl snorts Ajax in her bathroom. Hold on. Okay, so the... the break down the plot. It doesn't have to be a full detail, but just, like, break down this premise. How'd they get in this predicament? Cheech and Chong. I mean, like, who is getting them to, uh... To move this van... I think it was like one of those, oh, it's a misunderstanding. They're not who we wanted to do this. Mm. And they're like press ganged into it by circumstance. Right. So I, fig I figured those. as much, yeah. But I I couldn't. It was curious if you could say off the top of your head how that happens. I haven't watched that movie since Maddie and I started dating, so. I think I've seen the very beginning of that, but it was like. Uh, it was before the plot starts, so it's just like the opening scenes. There's a really great part in that movie where uh, Cheech has to take a shit, so they stop at the place where they end up with the van. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chong is like the one that gets misunderstood into having to do the job. Right. And so what kills me is, like, to this day, whenever I'm, like, trying not to, like, get sick, you know, on the way to the bathroom, uh, Cheech is, like, he's got the shits, and he's, like, rushing to the bathroom. Right. And he gets to the bathroom, and he's like, stay together, Cheeks. And to this day, I'm just, like, rushing to the bathroom, oh, stay together, Cheeks. Something I'd recommend is, um... A cork? Plug. No, not for that specific thing. It is uh, <laughs> if, if you can track down, oh, I didn't say it was for that. <laughs> their old, their old records are fucking hilarious. Like I've listened to a bunch of the skits they did on those. Uh, some of them are a little because they do like all I mean, of the voices 60s, themselves. 70s. So yeah. it's like it's, it's very stereotypical at times, but of the it's time. yeah, like it's definitely. I've seen worse. Like, it's not fucking Benny Hill in blackface, but it's it's moving in that direction. Have you seen, um, like, they did one bit where they're, like, like on stage talking about some of the craziest shit that's happened to them. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, one of the things is... At a show... Some, like, fans would give them weed. Sure. And so somebody threw on stage what looked like the sponge cover of a microphone, like that big black ball of sponge. Yeah, like I'm using right here. Although this one yeah. is, like, turned inside out to fit the smaller microphone I'm using. Yeah, and so that's what Tommy Chunk thought it, or Cheech thought it was. But... Tommy immediately recognized it for what it was. Mm -hmm. A big black ball of hash. Oh my fucking god, really? Which, yeah, which he just picked up and shoved right into his mouth. Oh no. And to this day, I have no idea what hash is. It's... Unless, unless we are discussing the corned beef variety. Uh, it... Ooh, I'm not exactly sure what... It is, um, other than really fucking hardcore. 
I... Uh, no, I'm not I mean, gonna... You know me, I'm... I'm not gonna say anything because this is going out there. And there's nothing incriminating. I have heard people say, because my... My father is a musician and he has a lot of musician friends. So I've heard tales of, uh... Just how hardcore stuff like that is. It's more popular in Europe, I'm pretty sure. Hashish. Yeah. Or at least it's easier to find, I guess, because it doesn't have to go across the Atlantic. I know, man, I'm not that big into drugs. I... From what I understand, it's a weed byproduct. Okay. Like, from what I've been able to ascertain, like, I don't know because, again, I just said I have no idea. Yeah, but, I like, mean, you could probably just check out the Wikipedia for it. It probably explains it pretty, pretty, uh, clinically. Like, the only thing I have not tried that I'm interested in trying at this point would be, like, acid or mushrooms. Hmm. Uh. Ooh. They, they are very different from what I've heard. Well, yeah. But, like I said, that's the only thing I haven't tried that I'm curious about. Um, the other option you could have would be ayahuasca, which would be easier to get if just because it's only technically illegal. And I know I'm not a lawyer, so this is not legal advice, but I think it's only technically illegal in its consumable form because it's just derived from like a specific cactus, which you're allowed yeah. to grow or just grows naturally in like the, the Southwest. Yeah. Or maybe in um, Mexico. I don't fucking know. Like I said, I don't I don't know for certain. All I know is that it makes you hallucinate real hard. Yeah. It's, uh, from what I understand, similar to peyote. Yes, very similar. In fact, I think but, they might just be different names of the same substance. Possibly. Um. Drug talk with Iggy and Andrew saying incriminating things but being dumb. Yeah, like, that. that's the only thing I've never tried that I'm curious about trying. Mm -hmm. And even then, it's just like an academic curiosity versus like oh sure i mean it's like um pan oswald said he was like i want to have as many experiences as possible to broaden my comedy palette see if there's any jokes that can be made about whatever specific unique experience for me it's more like life is short do i really want to limit myself but like yeah within reason oh, of course like there's no need to do anything necessarily dangerous but also like it's important to try things at least once like to know how you feel about it like, you I can't don't really make trying, you can't make like, informed decisions yeah. about things without actually knowing what they're like which is why I feel a lot of people who legislate shit should probably have more life experience because they clearly don't and if they did they would not be making some of the fucking idiotic decisions they do conversely you got people like AOC who have way more life experience than half these people. Yep, and she gets shit because she's young and she's not a white guy. Uh, as much as they can so, pretend like that's uh, not a big she... problem, they definitely have a problem with it. Which is Did you see up. Marco Rubio uh, tweeted yesterday about the death of Congress... Oh, I can't remember his last name. John... Um, Fuck, uh, I didn't hear about anybody tweeting about it, but I did hear about the death, which is unfortunate. Yeah, so, Marco Rubio tweeted, saying, you know, basically the basic platitude of, oh, you know, he was such a, a leader of the thing, and uh, such a hero, etc. Mm -hmm. And shared a picture of himself with Elijah Cummings. Oh... Uh... You know, a different black congressman who passed away, like, months ago. That's like, fuck, who was it? There was a a musician who passed away, like, the year before last. And uh, everybody was putting up the... They were saying the wrong name and putting up pictures of totally different uh, musicians. Yeah. 
I think there's yeah. actually a comic humor sketch about that where uh, they're like FBI agents and Reka points out that like if they're a white dude they can easily spot any tiny difference but if they're uh, a person of color they immediately cannot tell who the hell is who. God damn, what is up with the like fuck? Hmm. These go there's two cops that are firing like grenades that once they go off immediately like make me stutter and pause. Sure. And like there's two of them firing at like same time so they're just like fucking fucking die. Like they were doing it so quickly that I couldn't like get out of it in time. Right. God damn, that was fucking infuriating. God damn, these they do a lot of fucking damage. Like the ninjis? Yeah, no matter how much I fucking uh Doesn't that name sound slightly offensive? Oh, totally. I mean there's there's tons of words like that. In fact there's another college humor sketch about that. A trap in uh Caldwell. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. They do they do a full song and dance number about all the words that sound racist but aren't. Yeah, yeah. Which is very yeah. funny, but also like I mean, they make no bones about it that pretty much every other character in that sketch is really offended. Yeah, and it's not it's not humor that I'm comfortable with. Yeah, like it's one enough. of the few college humor sketches where I'm like, the appropriate time to have stopped this was before you made it. Like it. I mean, that's the yeah. thing too is having two white guys do it. It definitely yeah. puts an extra nasty power the, on the whole thing. Well, Trap is only half white, but is yes, he? I, I don't really know. I assumed he was white because he looks very white. From what I understand, he's part Asian, actually. There was okay. a bit, there's a sketch they did discussing that, um, hmm. where, uh, it was some of the other cast members who were, like, sitting on a board, like, judging how Asian each other is. Mm. Kind of like, you are Asian enough that you can use these phrases and terms without being racist. And, like... Yeah. What? Trap uh, was like. What do I do now? I fa oh wait, nope, never mind. Found it. I was stuck for half a second because I figured it would just be revealed once I found all of the toads, but uh, that makes more sense. Gotcha. Going outside. Ooh. I really, honestly, I really love this part because these puzzles are really fun. Um. Oh shit. Oh god damn it, they're doing this shit now, eh? Alright. Ah, fuck. Hold on, I should probably heal. A que <laughs> question. How much health, like max health, did you have by the end of the game? 185. 185? Holy shit. I guess this yeah. is only like halfway through the game, but god damn. Well, like. I also had a badge that, that you get better badges uh, mm -hmm. that really fucking boost your ability. Right. Um, and I mean, like, really boost your ability. Like, right now, you have just the regular versions of each badge. Right. But uh, you get, like, silver and gold versions. I only had the silver. Oh, wow. Um, so... Yeah. And I just had all the hearts. Like, I, every one of them I could find. Yeah. There's actually, um, at least Coco found, there was that one, like, character who would let you, uh, or rather would give you hints as to where any hearts you missed are. Yeah. A toad in Toad Town that's, like, leaning on a lamppost, smirking. Yes. The, the, the toad of love, as they call him. Heh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna make the joke that came to mind. Oh, I'm sure that they did so in the writing room. Uh, you have to climb those stairs to get out. I figured, I'm just checking if there are any other secrets. Um... Whoa. Don't wanna kinda. miss the secrets. Gotham City Starter Pack. I'm good. <laughs> like... Well, that's interesting, because when I got, um, when I got it on Switch, the, uh, 
it was uh, downloaded like the free DLC, which I think is just uh -huh. the like cutscenes basically. And it said the Gotham City starter pack was like 10 bucks. But then as I downloaded it, it switched over to purchased. I definitely did not like buy that. So I don't know if it just downloads it and keeps it behind a paywall or what. Probably. Hmm. Um. I do have to admit, I love the name of this nightclub. Mm hmm. Club L'Excellence. It's Lexellence. Oh, god damn it. It's all by <laughs> Lex Luthor. Right. Here's my. Here's a question. Uh huh. Because you're really into DC. Go for it. And you've mentioned uh, some of these in the past already, but what are your opinions on the various castings they've had in the DC Cinematic Universe for different characters? Like, the Henry one that... Henry Cavill was good, the writing was bad. Um, sure. The... I would say the casting, with the exception of Ezra Miller as mm -hmm. Flash, has actually been really good. Yeah, um, yeah. The casting for, like, Ben Affleck playing Batman, actually not a bad idea. Brilliant yeah. casting. Crappy well, specifically writing. because that's supposed to be, like, the Frank Miller, uh, the Dark Knight Returns style Batman, which I feel like a lot of, went over a few people's heads because that's kind of a deep cut for a Batman character. No, it's not. Well, it, it's really... among the average population, which is who they're trying to get with a lot of these superhero movies. Um, if you want my opinion on what was wrong with the movies, mm -hmm. watch Wisecrack discuss Zack Snyder and, you know, all that. Right. And specifically in relation to it, it's been within, like, the past, it's been since COVID. So just check Wisecrack's YouTube channel to find the video on it. Okay. And they pretty much nail it. Like they, they are exactly correct as to what the problems with that movie is. So, um, to go back to it, um, what, what is your opinion on, uh, 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 what's his name? Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Not good. Yeah. Okay. Like not bad, but not good. I uh, the well okay let's say rank. He's not playing Lex Luthor. Is the problem. Uh, how about why don't you uh, rank the um, live action Lex Luthers in your opinion? Uh, the one that also played the Flash is the best. Okay. Um. Oh right, that was stop. on a uh, Smallville, right? Yeah. Yeah, I never really watched Smallville. I saw a couple episodes, but uh, it was not one I was really big in. Do you know what the Jesse Eisenberg Lex Luthor felt like? What's that? The younger version of the one from the old uh, Christopher Reeves Superman. Okay. I, what, that might have been what I was going again? for, too. Uh, that, ooh, uh, the original one was Marlon Brando, but then they no, replaced no, no, no. him with Gene no, Hackman. No, that was Gene Hackman. Uh, the, Marlon Brando was Superman's father. Oh, no, yeah, right. Um, kal -El. But they had someone other than Gene Hackman in the first one, I'm pretty sure, right? No, I think it was Gene Hackman the whole time. But it, he feels like mm. the younger version of Gene Hackman trying to play the Joker. Oh. But he wasn't Lex Luthor, is the problem with his version of it. Yeah, he tried to make him more of like a, a psychopath. Like, um... If you want to update Lex Luthor and make him younger... You can do that. Yeah. If you're not going to go the same route as Smallville, then you make him a douchey tech bro that, like, give me the co the commentary of, I've created a new app that, like, give me that villain. Which they kind of did with um, Kingsman, the first one. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. How'd you feel about that movie? I haven't. Oh, you I haven't seen it? Opinion. It's okay. Like, oh, okay. It's not amazing. Really? It's not bad, it's just not amazing. Did you... did you read the graphic novel? No. Mmm. They're supposed to be fairly different. Um... It's just not something that, like... I don't... like 
like, uh, oh, Andrew, you'd love it. It's, you know, kind of a parody of James Bond. We got that with fucking... Like, I don't need hyper-violent uh, Austin Powers, is my thing. Well, it wasn't so much Austin Powers, really. Like, it, it was more grounded than that by a long shot and it honestly it felt more it felt more like um harry potter than it did even james bond like if harry potter was learning to be a, a spy rather than a wizard yes but it's a parody of the like secret agent genre and all that like well, aesthetically, I, but I, I feel yeah, like yeah. structurally it's far more like he goes off to a school and everything um, yeah, but I I don't need that, you know. Mm, okay. It's fine. Like, if that's what you like, I'm not gonna shit talk it. Mm -hmm. But it's just not what I I don't care about that kind of story. I keep forgetting to equip all of the sub weapon stuff and like the the closing scene where he's like fucking the princess in the ass and just like that's yeah that that scene really didn't need to be in there i would say honestly that's that's one of the major weak points of that movie is that they felt the need to not only like include that point but to make it like the catharsis for the character like that's his reward quote unquote for uh saving the world and it's it's uh, yeah, what would have been better gross. is if they didn't include that scene, mm -hmm. but like in the next movie, there's a scene where he has to like deal with royalty. Oh, and, they kind of uh, did. They actually, um, in the sequel. Well, no, just like have him like re-encounter her and be and, like, she just kind of shifts in her seat and he smirks and looks away, like just a little nod to it. Well, uh, they they actually, um, what they did do is that, uh, they they had in the sequel. Um, minor spoilers, Galahad's back. That's the Colin Firth character. But, uh, he at one point saves Elton John, and he they mirrored the same dialogue where he's like, if I save the world, can I have tickets to your next show? And Elton John is just like, please, if you save it, I'll get you a season's pass. It's like... It would have been funny if... It would have been actually funnier... He said, if you save it, I'll let you fuck me in the ass. Like, just as a callback. Yeah. Well, it, it was like, a callback. It was just more subtle than that. Yes, but, like... I'm not one for... Like, that's the kind of joke I would miss. Mm. So... What am I supposed to be doing? Oh, just killing these guys. Okay. Man, these fucking... Okey these doke. fucking... These, these guys... I honestly, yeah, now that you mention it, I kind of don't want to say the name of these characters. Feels, it feels bad. Yeah, you you feel like you get... Mm, it feels like a word white people use to there was, avoid saying that word. There was so one, like, that, um, one thing that threw me off was uh, this one Mexican YouTuber was talking about different words for semen, and he was like, Jizz sounds racist. I'd never thought about it, but like, yeah, it kind of does. Jizz? Yeah, something about it. It has like a. It now, sounds I, like I it's a slur. I agree if you add the uh, other part of the word, because jizz is the shortened version. Well, yeah, but if it, it jism sounds more. Technical. That sounds racist. No, no, it sounds it, it sounds closer to Latin than anything, like a scientific term, which is, I believe, what it more likely is. I don't remember if it's fully slang. I'm just saying, that sounds racist. Mm. All these fucking jisms moving into the neighborhood. Well, that's not even how you use it. Jism is singular. That's why I said all these fucking jisms. I believe it'd be jizia if it was plural. Hey, Iggy. Yeah? You wouldn't be using it as a slur in normal conversation either. Listen. Uh, like that's, that's my point, is... Is? I love to make up words that sound dirty, or just like, talk about words that sound dirty but aren't. Mm -hmm. Like, um... I 
I insist that the word brim sounds incredibly dirty. Brim. Oh, maybe I'm a touch of brim. Something, yeah, something about the brr really gives it's, it a gives it. It's a either tone. a body part or the act of orgasm. It's one or the other, and both work to sound as dirty as fucking possible. It sounds like a long lost Victorian like term for like butthole or something. Oh, baby, let me see your brim. Or oh god, I'm gonna brim. I think like, it, I both. think it fits better if you do it with a Cockney accent as well. Go for it. Let me hear it. No, I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm I did it. What? Shit! Thwomps! I don't have oh. the time. You want, to see action me brim? you want you want to see me brim? Of course extra. It's a whole lot of fiver. Nah, that's too I That's my problem think... is when I do Cockney it's it turns too Australian. Crikey. <laughs> well so there was a comedian who had a bit where he was like, if you listen to the Australian accent, it sound like especially considering that it's all like the lower class folks who were sent there as a prison colony hundreds of years ago. It sounds like the Cockney accent just got slowed down a bit. Like, oh blimey, we over here in the over here. I'm not sure where we're at, but it's bloody hot, ain't it? Uh, there's another language thing like Irish and Southern. They sound very mm. similar. True. Well, that was another joke I think I heard was like Australian is the southern version of British. Uh, kind of. Similarly, uh, uh the, like, the New Orleans can... accent is is the um the southern version of French Canadian. I found out from somebody who knew a little yeah. bit more about the history of it that yeah, a lot of the, the Creole people came in from Canada. Exactly. Yeah, that really surprised me when I learned it. Um. um... Uh, Elton Brown discusses that in an episode of Good Eats. Did he? Yep. I in the Creole episode. The one where he makes po' boys? Poor, bo poor boys, as he says. Jambalaya. And Jambalaya Gumbo. one. Okay, I don't think I've seen the Jambalaya one. Uh, it starts with a parody of another cooking show mm -hmm. in which a guy uh, from Boston pretends to be Creole. Fuck, did I miss... Cooking. Did I miss the switch for these... Shuriken? Uh, yeah. You have to rescue Luigi to get those running. Oh, well, I definitely didn't see Luigi anywhere, so fuck. Hold yeah. On. Do you want me to tell you where to look? Uh, well, hold on. You have on. to run through hold it on. all again. Was that? You have to run through it all again. Okay, I figured as much, so yeah, I'll I'll check again. Hold if on. You pass it, if you pass him again, I'll point it out. Okay, yes. All right. Yeah, that, that works for me. I'm, I'm gonna wait until you've passed it. And you have to run through it a third time. Okay. Because you can't go backwards. Mm -hmm. I believe. And that's the best part for me. Hmm. Like, I'm just going to enjoy watching you run around like, God damn it. Whoop. Anything else? Open. Tricky ninjas. Let's pull this. Like, first. have you seen like bad or bad boy Tamatanga or the bad guy Tamatanga from New Japan? Uh, uh, I use think so. Ninja yeah. When when he clearly means the other word. And I'm oh just like, no, no, thank and, you. Like, yeah, I'm just like, Tama, no, please stop. It's very uncomfortable. Well, that's like... Ugh, I, I hear that sometimes. I think that's what juggalos do as well. It's like, yeah. ugh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Like, technically, it, you're not using the word, but it's not so much about... We know what word about, you are using. It's, yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's about the intent more than it is about what you actually said. And I get they're trying to use it because it sounds inclusive and like part of a community like i get the logic behind what they think they're doing but the thing is no, the thing is too okay. doing the reverse of using like white slurs is would also be kind of like fucked up considering most of them are like 
if you use them as if they were a positive thing, would be celeb like celebrating the oppression they represent. So that's that's probably not good either. Well, like there was a stand-up comedian that was like, uh, it was a black lady whose name I can't remember because I heard her in high school. Mm. But her point was, we should just make the words or the n-word a snack cracker, like a snack chip. And uh, then there are two twenty-five roads in here. Twenty. There are twenty-five, there are 25 toads. toads in here. So uh, I presume uh, so, I need to get all of them then. I guess, but uh, you don't need to get them all to save. Uh, Luigi. Uh. But yeah, um, it was one of those things where uh. Um, she was like, oh, we should make it a snack chip. Imagine going to a party. What? They ain't got no mmms? Y'all got crackers, but no mmms? Nobody wants crackers at a party. I'm like, mm. you know, I get what she's going for. Sure. And, you know, 15 years ago when I was 15 in 2004 or whatever. Ha ha ha, I get it. Very funny. Now yeah. as an adult, I'm like, this is uncomfortable. Like... Little this bit. joke could have stopped. Like, we didn't need this joke, did we? Like, no. really? I mean, that's um, the thing, too, is, like, it's not really up to us to even, like, necessarily criticize that, because really, if anyone would know when it's going to be appropriate, it'd be the people who are oppressed by the term, so... Yeah. I, I'm not really at liberty to... Like, I can s state my own opinions about how I feel about it, but they don't really matter as much because in the end it's not going to affect me or my life at any point I don't plan on using the terms at any point so it's definitely not any worry of that and if, yeah. they're, if they're used on me that's just an incredibly bizarre situation um although I mean people seem really confused by my ethnicity I've had people think I'm Italian, Jewish uh, I get Asian a lot because my eyes are very thin, which, guys, it's not cool. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly. I'm pretty sure I'm, like, a quarter Irish, quarter Norwegian from my mom's side, and my dad has some Romani distantly. That's, like, the closest to any kind of non-white ethnicity, as far as I know. My family was extremely racist throughout its history. Mm -hmm. So I'm half Irish, half German, and the oh closest boy. I get to not that is my cousin who is half black. Oof, that's a that's a big jump. Oh, yeah, my grandfather hated it. Mm -hmm. Um, he didn't meet my cousin until I was born. And my cousin's five years older than me. Yikes. Yeah. It's pretty bad. It was, yeah. Um, and he only did it because my grandmother and my mom and his mom begged. And what's <laughs> really <laughs> fucked up about it is once he did meet my cousin, he loved my cousin. Of course he did. Like, there, it's no secret in my family, like, when both my grandparents died, all the cousins came to me and were like, you know they were, you were their favorite, right? I was like, yeah, I know. Mm. Um, like, it was, like, by a long shot, I was the favorite. But he was not far behind. Like, we were the two most favorite in the family. And the rest of the cousins, because keep in mind, my grandparents had six kids. I have so many cousins, I have never met them all. And I never will. I haven't even met all my uncles and aunts because one died in prison. Like, yikes! Big enough family, I will never, ever in my life meet them all. You could come up to me and be like, "Hey, you know so and so? I'm his boy," and I'd be like, "Yeah, sure, that tracks." You know. So, by a long shot, he and I were the favorites, mm -hmm. and like, not even like a little bit of a competition. Hmm. Um, and it's ironic to me because, like, if my grandfather had just met him sooner, he might have stayed the favorite. I might never have been the favorite, but I was. And only re and like, 
before I was even I met them the my grandparents the day I was born. By the way, you already missed Luigi. Um Fuck. You wanna know where he is now? I looked yeah, I fucking You didn't looked, look everywhere. I swear, I checked like you every fucking corner. You ran right past him. Was it you in ran the swamps? Right by him. No. Where then? When you get to that little bridge with the outside scene, jump off the bridge into the outside scene. Oh fucking god damn it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but that's another that's another thing where it's because I have like gamer experience and like sensibilities. I just Explore assumed everywhere. it was gonna be, well I assumed it was gonna be a fucking uh it was just gonna be a set piece and it would be an invisible wall, so I didn't even consider that an option. They set it up for you earlier with Pop on the falling off that other bridge. That was yesterday, man. I don't remember that. That was the setup though. Hmm. Alright, well I'll just zip through this as quick as I can, because I've already killed all the enemies and uh I'm I'll probably come back and get the perfect score some other time, but for now we're just gonna go. I'm not through. worrying about that fucking perfect score. Coco also had perfect. to look up Coco also had to look up where Luigi was, apparently, so I guess it's not that easy after all. I figured it out. <laughs> like I only had to look up a walkthrough twice. Mm-hmm. And the second time was fighting King Ali. Hmm. Like, the first time was finding that fucking door, and the second right. time was fighting Ollie. Hmm. Pull. What? Here we go. Do 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 gonna go get Luigi. God damn it. That's such a simple thing, but I don't know why both times my brain were just like, nah, this is just a, a transitionary scene. There's nothing here for you to see. Hmm. I mean, it's an understandable mistake to make. Like, it does look like just, ah, some respite. It's also, I guess I was treating it because it sets itself up as a, um, as a, like, theme park attraction. Like, in a theme park attraction, you wouldn't go off the beaten path like that that would get you in trouble and shit so i assume that you had to stay on the rails well and that you remember, was my downfall what were, you, what were you told about the shuriken though that the maintenance room gears are all gummed up right so, so it is you have to go off the beaten path that feels weird i don't know that's that feels like well strange. it's not part of the it's part of the story not part of the uh, theme park I know, but the theme park, I'm just saying, like, I've never worked at a theme park or anything, so seeing the, the behind-the-scenes stuff feels just kind of, kind of spooky. Yeah, I, I can see your logic there. Uh, oh, God! He's fucking all t t mangled in the goddamn gears! This is very morbid. Yeah, this game is dark compared to some of the others. Like, I'm I'm thinking, man, the other games must have been a little more like subdued, maybe. But like, no, I'm I'm remembering some dark ass shit. Yeah, they they go into stuff. I was saying to Coco, and Coco doesn't relate as much because she didn't play the other games. But like, one thing that's kind of disappointing to me is the first two games built up this very specific aesthetic. With the, the companions being all, like, a unique version of whatever creature they are. Yeah, and, yeah, that's a common complaint. And, like, the fact they had, like, life shrooms and, like, honey... So like, oh, they... there's life shrooms in this. I will warn you... Well, there, there's, you... there are one-up mushrooms, I saw, but they're not life shrooms. What I'm saying is, like, specifically... That's what it works as. I know it works at that, but my point is they had a whole set of, like, branding and everything that was unique to this specific series while still feeling true to the Mario form, and they yeah, just threw all of that out. For Super Paper Mario. Exactly. And which, yet, yeah. that one never gets the hate. They blame it all on Color Splash and Sticker Star. Well, yeah, because nobody, oh, nobody played, um, nobody really played the Super Paper Mario. And then, but, even then, like, everybody fucking, like, despised the Wii U for some reason. So, here's my thing. 
I didn't hate Paper Mario uh, mm -hmm. Color Splash. I think it was good. I think it was a fun game. Uh, I didn't like the mechanics. Ooh. And that's a different... Like, you can dislike mechanics and still like the story. I that was... Yes, but at that point, it's like, if the mechanics... If the mechanics aren't very effective, then they can't be supporting the story. And, like, you can have a decent story that's around a game, but if the mechanics are not tying into that story, then it's not really a game story. It's just... It, it could be told any other kind of way. If it's not a story that could only be told uniquely through a game, I don't. I think of that as kind of a failure of storytelling. It's not utilizing the medium effectively. Right. And I think they were just trying to expand and it didn't work. Yeah. That said, I think... Um, for me... And again, this is just me. Um... I am not against, um... Good story in favor of, you know, bad game. Like, if the story's good enough... I, well, well, that's my I point, is that how a... good can it be if the gameplay is not tying into it? Like, the, the video games uh, the as a medium... The gameplay tied into... For me, the, it could have been just fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and the story would have been fine if they just didn't do the card system. And that is 100% my opinion. Uh, I you could have made the story work without the cards. And, you know... Well, that's the thing, there's... is that the, the gameplay should not be a hindrance to the story. And right. video games as a medium are set to do things that no other medium can for storytelling. Like, that's what... Aaron Hansen was talking about in Sequelitis. It's like, there are th stories you can tell in, like, Mega Man X purely through theming, where the gameplay and the story tie directly into each other in a way that is not only satisfying, but is itself wholly more, like, effective than any other form of storytelling, because it can cause you, the viewer, to, like, not just, like, relate to the characters, but feel the things that they feel. And not just make the characters be the ones who are in the story, but make you, the person playing, a part of the story. So, for me, when I think back on Color Splash, I don't think about the gameplay. Uh, like, that doesn't... Like, I, I remember that it was bad. And I think, oh, man, it sucked. But I don't think... Like, that's not the first thing that comes to mind. The first thing that comes to mind is absolutely the story and the aesthetics and the positives, right? Right. Like, I remember the good shit. I don't remember the bad. So, can I still say, okay, well, the game was therefore bad if all I remember is the good? I Fuck! Yes, but I think that says more about you and how you experience games than it does about the quality of that particular game. But somebody else may look at that game and say, oh, well, this game is amazing. So can I, like, the fact that I don't agree with, you know, like, the gameplay being good, you might play it and find it awesome. Are you wrong? Am I wrong? Or is the game good or bad if we disagree on whether the gameplay is good. It, hmm. It's all fucking subjective, so well, at the end of the uh, day, if what's more important to me is the well, that's story... Very, that's really nihilistic, though. The implication that nothing can have any objective meaning of any sort. You can still analyze how well things work together, how effective something was at storytelling through the yes, gameplay, but... through any f a different method. Like, you just have to read it in different lenses. All right, so going back to our earlier conversation then, would you say that uh, Mario Kart is a good or bad game? It depends on which Mario Kart, but... Any of them. Pick one. Any of... Pick I your mean, favorite one. Uh, I mean, just because I grew up with it, uh, 64. All right. Would you say it's a good game? I... Mm, it's good at what it's trying to do. Which I personally, like, my metric is always going to be, 
what was it trying to do, and did it accomplish that? And in that case, with the, the technical limitations it did, it did the best job it could have with the kind of game it was trying to be. Right. I would say because it's a racing game straight up, it sucks, because I don't like racing games. So, we well, I, already disagree, like, because marking you out are a not genre... inherently biased against the format of the gameplay. Whereas if you got rid of the racing gameplay, well, I would yeah, be more but that's, interested. That's a disservice to the entire idea of criticism. It, Treating it like you're no, it's admitting personal, that I have bias. Marking out, a style marking, of marking out an entire genre is it's incredibly anti-intellectual. There, you are stating that there is no possible way that a racing game could entice you. There's no different there way. But that's what you say, though. But there are I've so played many. So many, and they suck. Same with first which ones have you played? Shooters. Which ones have you played? F Zero, Star Fox, fucking Mario Kart. Star Fox is not Demolition. a racing game. What are you talking it's about? It's fucking same basic mechanics though. No, it's uh, not. It's a, Shenyu, it's a it's fucking a fucking forklift driving. Shenmue forklift that's not, driving. Well, right? that's a race, but that's a racing game. That's a racing mini game. Uh, the crammed Shenyu into fucking... another game's uh, another game's engine. That's not the same thing. Yes, but my point is, at no point have I ever been in a part of a game where I have to race any damn thing and been like, this is fucking good. Well, that's because it's like, in a way that doesn't appeal to you. There there are hundreds of racing games out so. there, and while it might, there might not be a game right now, there is the possibility that someone could come up with a very innovative, different way to do things. Like, look at, look at Tony Hawk's but Pro Skater... It, Look at Tony Hawk's Pro Skater versus Skate. In Tony, Ho everybody saw uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater as the gold standard for skating games. Like this is how skating games should control. This is what they should look like. Like this is perfect. There's no improvement. But then, by the time Skate Three came out, the controls are completely different, but make you feel so much more like you're actually riding a skateboard. Like it's actually more intuitive towards doing that. And it makes Tony Hawk look so much more cumbersome and, like, uh, almost, like, cartoonish. Uh, so, oh. yep, I get that's this. another point, like, I like Tony Hawk Underground, but not regular Tony Hawk, because the story. Right. So, like, if, if there is the a racing game... did not matter. It was the story. Whereas if there if is a I racing game, race... if there is a racing game with a solid story, with completely different, like it can mechanically work completely differently from the racing games you've then played before. Then it's not before. a racing game. What do you mean it's not a racing game? If you race, it is a racing game. Like it. That's... No, because if you would piss off so many people if you changed the fundamentality of that. It would be like trying to change You say that, but they've games. done it so many times. Like, that happens with RPGs. That's happen that happened RPGs with skating games. RPGs are fundamentally un Like, they add stuff, but they're more or less the Like, I, I just gave you an example. Skating games. And not only is Skate 3... not Skate 3 is, in a lot of ways, way more popular nowadays than... Uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was like that's an incredibly popular game and people loved it because they changed it in a way that made it more intuitive and the same thing could be done with racing games it doesn't have to be just straight ahead turning left and right changing your acceleration oh, and stuff like it could be I've entirely played different, different racing games I've played racing games that already changed that and it yeah, still but sucks I don't you're looking enjoy at them. it you're looking at it from the paradigm of the things you've played and what you can conceive. But that's the thing, okay, is that so... there are it can be changed in a way that you would never foresee. Like you're looking at all of your known uh you're looking at all the stuff you know. You're not looking at any of the unknown unknowns, the things that you don't even realize you don't know, the things that some other person who actually like designs games could come up with something incredibly innovative, incredibly entertaining. So even though it's a racing game, fundamentally still it is done in a way that you actually find entertaining. Marking it out as like you're just not even going to try them because of that reason 
is ridiculous. That's why I played through fucking Mario RPG. I fucking hate turn-based RPGs, but I actually found I liked that game because it changed it in ways that were absolutely, like, more entertaining to me. And I can't... You know why that one was more entertaining to you? Why? Because Square was struggling to sell RPGs in the United States, and so they dumbed it down for an American audience. It, they made it much easier because they weren't doing well. No, so it's not. Regular... I don't like it because it's easy. I like it because the the mechanics of how you uh, attack and um, take damage are so much more intuitive. Like they actually, it makes it me feel like I have control. Unlike a lot of turn-based RPGs where I'm just at the whims of the other characters, so I can either grind until I'm just way stronger and just mow everybody down like I did with the last Pokemon, or I can just, like, um, I, I can just kind of hope that things work out. Like, that's my point, is that they changed the RPG in a way that was way more entertaining. Or look at this, this would be considered a turn-based RPG, but the battle system is so incredibly different from the others that it's far more enjoyable than most turn-based RPGs to me, because it's not just a matter of thumbing through menus and just finding the one drop-down command that I need. Mm. Um... When you can find a racing game, or a football game, or a basketball game, or a first-person shooter that proves me wrong, I will admit that you were right. But until such time, I don't like racing games. Because experience tells me they all just, fucking suck. That It's just so close-minded. It's not close-minded if it I is. played You're a just... thousand of them and no. hate them all. It's fully close-minded. You're fully just stereotyping this one specific type of game. There's no way there could be a good one. They're all exactly the way that I th envision them to be. Your mind isn't open to them being different from what you think. When you show me one that is, I'll admit that I am wrong. But well, it's until not the... you can... It's oh, not on the, it's, theoretical It, it doesn't like, matter, though, because your mind is closed off to even the possibility. No, it's not. My you, you say that, but everything you're everyone saying... Everyone I've played sucks. And that, when you can show me one that doesn't, then I'll say you're right. You but until such time, they all currently suck. You are operating under a theoretical good game that doesn't exist yet. And expecting me to say, well, yes, if you create the perfect racing game, it won't suck. I'm but just... they haven't yet, and that's the that's point. That's what you say, though. There are so many hundreds you have not played. How do you know? I had to go all the way back to the 80s to find a Square Enix like RPG that I actually liked with Super Mario RPG. You mean the 90s? 90s, whatever. Far enough back, like over two decades. How do you know there isn't something from like the arcades in the 70s that's an because amazing I've racing played game? Them. Have you? I've pla yes! Have you played all of them? Not all of them, but fucking at that point they were all the same. That's like, my point though, that you've played, the, you may have played the bulk of them, but it's just like in most cases. When you find it's the, it's theoretical the, it is the fringe, touch one, it is the fringe examples. It is the fringe examples that always end up being the most entertaining in almost every art form. Whether it's music, whether it's books, whether it's movies, it's never the the mainstream thing that you find that is just trying to be another copy of what is mainstream that is going to be entertaining. Like it's you you have to keep your mind open to the possibility because it doesn't sound like you have. It sounds like you've completely written off the entire genre because you've had enough bad experiences with it that there's no way there could be a good one. When you find one that doesn't suck and is drastically different and all that, I will play it and I will say, you were right, Iggy. But until then, they all suck. Until you can prove my premise wrong, they suck. My all premise right. is based off experience and having played dozens of them, they're fucking awful. Hmm. Like, I've never been like, I can't wait to get home and play this new fucking racing game. Like, I've always been like, god damn, another fucking racing game. Ooh. Like, fucking 
when they stop all sucking, then I'll admit, oh yeah, I was wrong. This actually slaps. Till then, none of them slap. Mm -hmm. They all, everything, because you can't live life based off assumptions. You have to base your ex life off things you've experienced. And so far, experience says they all fucking suck. Well, let's let, let's move over to the. How do you feel about golf games? Sucks. Well, there we go. I, like I can golf. already tell you at uh, least two examples that are vastly different from any standard golf game that you've played. In Golf Story, which becomes an RPG where you can play golf at any point and solve puzzles with it, completely different from any other golf game you've played. Or Golf Peaks, which turns it into a turn-based golf game where you have to actually strategize golf. it out like a puzzle. But that's not golf. That's a puzzle game and a strategy game. But it's a puzzle you that would only change... it's a puzzle that you would not have exist. To change the premise of the game for the... it to not suck. It's not the like... premise though. The premise is still golf. It's golf in it's golf with a different control scheme, but it is still fundamentally golf. It is a it is a specific puzzle that only makes sense if you're looking at it from the paradigm of golf. If you completely abstracted it out so that there was no mention of golf in it, it wouldn't, like, it would still clearly, to anyone who knows that it was a golf game, only work because it was built from golf. The same way that something like Pack Attack is a Pac-Man puzzle game that only makes sense because they started from the starting premise of it's a Pac-Man game. They wouldn't think to do any of that shit if it wasn't specifically that framework. But my point is, if you have to change the, like, fucking gameplay to not be just golf, then the fucking premise immediately already sucked. Like, I sh you shouldn't have to modify the, in, uh, the seed of the game to be something more than what it originally was for it not to suck. Like... You say that, but then you play Shenmue, which is effectively uh, a Virtua Fighter RPG. It's still clearly a fighting game. game. It's still clearly a fighting game at its core, but it's a fighting game with a story that takes you through different set pieces to when you will fight again. And yes, there it's... are mini games like the, the racing, the darts, all of that stuff. It is still... In, in its foundation, a fighting game with an adventure story. Even that is a, an example of one genre using elements of another in a way that changes it and makes it more interesting to people who wouldn't like fighting games. Like, I, I feel like the people who like Shenmue aren't also necessarily fighting game enthusiasts. I would argue that Shenmue is based off a fighting game, but it is an action-adventure title. It's an action-adventure, but the main gameplay is walking around uh -huh. and fighting. No, which... there's very little fighting in the game. I mean, it's integral, though. Like, the main story beats are all based around fighting. Not really. There's more QTE than fighting. Mm. No, not by, really. By like, there, there was shot. like a little bit of QTE in that game. There were no, like three there instances. A lot more, there is a lot more QTE than there is fighting. Hmm. By a long shot. I don't know. I watched through that whole playthrough you did, and there was. Yeah. I recall yeah, maybe. Remember when I told hand... you I trimmed anything that wasn't story based? Hmm. There, a lot more QTE than fighting. What am I fucking doing wrong here? I don't... Uh, you have to hit them, and then... Yes, I've been. Jump on them. Jump on them first. Jump on yeah, them? God damn them. it. Yeah. Okay. And then hit them. Yep. Uh, this is where you get to that boss that I was going fucking goddamn over the other day. I guess my larger point is I don't know how you can like many games, if any at all, with that kind of thinking. Because that thinking because closes I'm you off from. Because I'm willing to give a game a shot. That's the difference. Like I may not like a genre, but I will give it a shot when there's a new game. And then when it sucks, I'm like, yep, yeah, I what? I don't know what I fucking expected. But I you've hate even the said genre in you've even said that you have deep confirmation bias when it comes to that stuff. If yeah, someone but if I have someone directly fly, hypes so something up, 
If somebody d uh, directly hypes something up as the exception to the rule, you already are coming in with the mentality of, I'm going to hate it because someone recommended it. No. Um, for instance, I have Gamefly right now, right? Mm -hmm. I will pick up a game just because I don't have to technically pay for it. I can play it as long as I want, send it back, no harm or foul. So I will grab games that I know I'm going to hate. Like, there are a lot of... Like, the one genre I will not play is visual novels, because that's not a fucking game. That's a comic book, not a game. That's it. That's well, the there only you genre go. Even I... once again, have you played Danganronpa? Because that series is a mystery-solving game, which is just... Then it's Similarly, not a visual novel. It is a visual novel, though. It The I vast majority this... of the gameplay is through visual novel means. Do you get to make choices that affect the outcome of the story? Yes. Then it's a game. It's that's my yes. That's almost every visual novel. No, every one I've ever picked up has been just a comic book, and you have no control over the fucking story. Well, okay, that every is, single one. that is not a game, but I would also, I would that's, also exactly. Only... So that's the reason why I differentiate. I don't consider if it, if you can actually make decisions affect the outcome that's a game not a visual novel a visual novel by my definition you can have games that look like visual novels but are not because by definition if i can't affect the outcome it's not a fucking game hmm. it's a fucking comic book and that's why i will not pick up a visual novel because they're just fucking comic books well, then what about fucking Shenmue? Shenmue, you don't really affect the fucking end game. I mean, you decide whether no, or not it's going to complete or not, but, like, that's literally... No, but literally... you have agency. You have Do you, control. though? Because it all boils yeah. down to the same spot. No matter what decisions you make, you end up in the same ending, the same basic story beats. You're just going between them. Yes, but, like I mentioned during the stream, there was a character that straight up I didn't know existed because people were like you know oh you didn't talk to this character well who is that character you find him when doing this like I had no idea because apparently there's a whole character storyline that you could run into well, if yeah, you're but that's, with a different part of the game that that is so, another plot thread but in the end it all boils down to the same the same core plot of the, the trying to find Lon D and figure out how to avenge your father. Yeah. Like you can't decide to join Lon D or go off and like do something else with your life and decide to forgive Lon D because it doesn't well, matter to you. Well, in no game can you do that with the exception of, well, they claim you can, but in most games you can't do that. Well, my, my larger point, point is like, is, what, what I'm saying is like the- If, if all I'm doing is pressing A and like, that's it because there's not going to be a change like it's a path that i cannot deviate from whatsoever that's not a game like if my like if if you could make it a movie like well i, I would also say watch yeah a YouTube video of it and nothing change any any visual novel like that i will agree like any visual novel like that unlike something like say um in fact, I'd say the best example of what I'm trying to say is, like, David Cage's games, where you yeah. can actually, like, change the game based on where you go, especially with something like his most recent Detroit Become Human. Like, that one, there are massive, like, changes you can make depending on how you play the game. Yeah, there's, like, his are the, the extreme version of what I'm talking about, but, like, imagine the exact opposite of that, mm -hmm. where you just press X. Yeah, like that's it. That's all you do. Well, uh, yeah, I would agree. Game. But the thing is, I can't think of a term like, that if... would do it otherwise because when people make a visual novel, it the good ones are stuff like, I mean, honestly, just anything Spike Chunsoft made. The Nonary games, Danganronpa. Yeah, um, the Nonary games are amazing. Yeah, and they are considered. They are considered like... visual novels, but I feel like yeah, that's probably not necessarily the best. Definition oh. for them because they're right. fucking. There should be another term. Like the nonary games game. are puzzle games. The nonary games are just straight up puzzle games with. Yeah, right, but it's a very. Cut the cutscenes are such a large part of it, though, that it's like I feel like no. we need some another term for something that is, um, that is aesthetically a visual novel, but is more gameplay heavy than just 
a simple storytelling visual mechanism. Visual novel style. You can just call it that. It's a visual novel style game. In much the same way that, you know, Metrovania is a style of game. You know. Well, that's, that's honestly, that's a critical term. That's not really any kind of a Yes, term. but they are very similar. And you know what you're expecting when you hear that, so... Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I'm getting close to a boss fight here, so I'm Yeah, gonna... you're getting close to the rubber band man. Alright, I'm gonna take a quick uh, biology break to prepare for this. So, right. I'll BRB. Do you want to be on mic or off? Uh, whatever. I'll leave you I... on then. You... Alright, I am at level 11 now in the uh, MMO that Iggy and I are setting up to play. Um, yeah, I am banging on all four, but Iggy's going to start the game on stream. Um, so it'll be interesting to see from level one up, I want to get to at least level 15. Um, good work. No, I want to keep that. Do I need that? Like, I should have the style now. Um, I want to get up to, like, level 15 so I can use certain items and whatnot when we get to that point. Um, so, I need to check my inventory. And make sure I am equipped with only the best items. You will no longer be able to trade this item if you equip it. Yes. Uh, yes. Use this item with plans to develop. No, okay. Yes. Check here. Saboteur's uh, belt. Petroleum sheathed gauntlets. Prophet's War Standard. Hmm. Okay. I'm at this point just like collecting styles. Because uh, in this game, you can set your appearance, and then when you buy new items, you can either choose to. Um, Uh, go with the new design of your item, or change it so that you uh, have the you know old style. So, for instance, if I get a cape and I currently have bat wings, I can wear the cape, but it'll still look like bat wings. Or I could choose to change it. So I'm just like gathering all the fucking uh, equipment. So that I can just have options. Um, in fact, let me check out my style. Am I not equipped for this yet? Um, yeah, so. I have something called a Death's Head helmet. Uh, collected, collected. Collected, collected, collected. Not collected. Mask of the Victor. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. That increased my stats. Uh, uh, Promethium Lockbox requires one. Thank you. Do I have one? Nope. Okay. Uh, All right. So, I am back. Welcome back. I was water? discussing how uh, items in... So in this game, you can create your character however you want it to look. Mm -hmm. And then you can buy, like, items. So right now, my character has bat wings. But if I equip a cape, that replaces the bat wings. Hmm. Okay. If I want, I can leave it looking like bat wings 
even though it's a completely different item there now. Hmm. Or I can switch over. And so I was explaining that to the viewers. The viewers? Um, yeah, so now I'm getting, like, I've gathered all of my stuff. Like, I equipped a bunch of items just so I could get the, uh, style. Because once you've equipped an item, you can get rid of it. You get to keep the style, though. So if you want to switch over to it later, you can. You don't need to keep it in your inventory. So I'm just getting rid of my excess items, the styles of which I've already collected. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't know what a research resurgence mega capsule. Available for a limited time, this resurgence mega capsule contains unlocked versions of the nine most recent time capsules, plus a pack of three all new neon chromas. This capsule contains one of each of the following: neon chroma, unlocked paradox time, unlocked assassin time. I have so many of these. So this is just like a blue box thing? Basically. Mm. Yeah, like I've got like a shit ton of them in my inventory. But they I all do the up. same thing. Mm. So like they unlock the same thing. Neon Chroma Pack, Paradox Time, Assassin Time, Kryptonian Time, Cursed Time or shit, Cursed Gotham Time. Uh, Atlantean time, Shazam time, Dark Knight's time, Dark Multiverse time, Oracle's time. Wow, that's uh, a lot of options. I don't know if I can give items to people? Hmm. This is a special type of currency that is shared by all characters on your account and is not tradable. Hmm. Well. Uh... I have items that I can't use because I don't have enough funds. The, what? How, so you yeah, have to I have... pay to use the item? Yep. But, like, I understand why. You're unlocking stuff that you had, you know. Oh lord, here he comes. That rubber oh, band. Oh lord, he coming. The Is elastic he... entertainer. Doesn't it look like Makuhita fucked a uh, goddamn... Makuhita. Okay, that was the... The name of the Doesn't it look like Makuhita fucked the Goodyear guy, Michelin the Michelin man. man, and the fucking, uh, fucking Marshmallow Man? God damn, he's thick. Right? He's really swinging them hips. My goodness. Oh, yeah, man. Um, All right. I will only, I will keep my mouth shut on how to fight these things yeah. until your second or third try. How's that sound? Okay, and well, like you did like already. Getting... You already said yesterday that uh, using the ten thousand fold hand is going to be the most most useful thing. Yes, because this fight was so fucking bad. Like mm. I hated this. Okay. You know what's really annoying about this game? Uh, what? And I'm not trying to be funny or anything, like, it's, it's really annoying. Um, it keeps wanting me to, like, buy the different things it has for sale. Oh, well, shit, yeah. drinks. They're trying to make oh, money. Shit. Yeah, it's, uh, it just keeps, like, every few minutes, like, offering me one of the things. I'm like, I'm good, but it has so many that it just keeps doing it, like, every God ten damn minutes. It. So, like, the first two days we're probably gonna get... Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about those rubber bands, hmm? How do you feel about that shit? I'll tell you this. Mm -hmm. Say you're going left, and then it bumps you down. Yeah. You will not go straight forward. You will bump down one row, and then go left again. Okay. So, right now, it looks like you would land on the thousand hands. You will not. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would do, now you, now you will, because you got the arrow, but... Yeah. If you had used the rubber band to move down to on, you would have gone down uh, to the next rubber band mm, and landed on the fist. That? Yeah, I'm just going to stick it with that. Okay. So, the rubber bands are like a limited version of the arrows. They right. only move you one bro over, then you continue the trajectory you were on. It pull, bow. That's pretty good. I am calling the rubber band a guy because of the song. 
uh, Coco. Mm, uh, you just, know, that's a fair point. Um, All I know is I'm the rubber band the, is... It's the rubber band, man. You're bound to lose control when the rubber band starts to jam. But, so I'm only, I'm pretending it's the character from that song. In which it is explicitly referred to as the rubber band man. But okay. as far as in the game, uh, the Let's rubber see. bandit here is not uh, gendered. Let's see. In fact, none of the stationery is gendered. Oh, yeah. How about that? Which is nice. Uh, ooh, actually, I could go with this. And then... Um, I ooh, I can that. unlock a new kind of weapon other than rifle. Ooh, what do I go with? Ooh, bow. Bow, brawling, dual pistol, dual wield, hand blaster, martial arts, one-handed shield, staff, or two-handed. Wait, no, that doesn't help me because I'm not going down. Um, I guess I'd want to go out with this. Then... Oh, shit, I can't really do much more than that. That eh, fuck it, I'll stick with that yeah. then. That's gonna that's yeah, gonna that do works. damage. It's just I was hoping I could get the times two or the. I guess the additional uh, one doesn't work for the. Uh, nope, the it does not. Gold. It does not. No. Okay, in that case, yeah, I'm just gonna go for the double. Do you know how long twos? it took me to figure out that the times two meant your attack times two, and not you get two turns? Hmm. Yeah. Jean Pierre is the traditionally masked name, isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah. Jean is the French John, and Pierre is just French. I don't know that there's a Anglo cognate for it, <laughs> but Jean, Juan, John, uh, yeah, they're all uh, from the same name. I'm gonna so, go with a is it gonna do more damage if I get the if I get the attack panel closer to the center? I don't know that no. it necessarily would. No, it doesn't matter. Okay, then I'll just bump this out. Um, yeah, that works. Okay. Double up. Uh, oh, well, yeah, I guess the colored pencils are named, but doesn't... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Bow. I mean, Damn, but then, I only did then one again, damage that time? What the fuck? I think how long you pull kind of matters. Hmm. Should I be going for a longer pull or a shorter one? I don't fucking know, Iggy. I just fucking play the game. Um. Ah, fuck. Oh, man. That one sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Though, I will say, Coco, they can be gender neutral, but Jean Pierre did have wood. <laughs> I know, I know, that's not a fuck. like, I'm you're, going You're for real a joke. proud of that one, huh? Yeah, it's just a joke. It, it's it's not... just a joke, guys. Don't worry about like, it. I, I, uh, I know having wood is no fucking indicator of gender. I'm just, I wanted to make a penis joke. Of course you did. Alright, let's try this again. Um. Magic right, circle on. Oh, no, you're fine. I I was simply referencing the fucking like. No, yeah, I'm only hitting him for one top. damage. What's up? Maybe. I think I do need to get closer in. Maybe. Like I feel like something about being further away has to, because the first one I got was way closer, and I did like a lot of damage. Mm. Hmm. Let me test that theory here. Um, do I want? Fuck if I can. Uh, I think I want to go with a bow. I think I want to learn the bow. The bow. Do I want to go with brawling. You don't want Allows to go with the bow. Brawler, weapons. Dual hmm. pistol? Oh, dual pistol. That'd be a uh, good well, one. Well, if I go in here, and then I do... How many points do I have? This. So, okay, when I do, when it bumps me with the rubber bands on the field, I continue moving in the same direction around yeah. the circle just one in yeah or what whatever the direction is got it okay yeah. 
in that case, let me... So, for instance, you would want to rotate that hand clockwise one, and then up one. What? What hand? Or, yeah, the hand that you were about to use. The yeah. you had under the on. You want to rotate the... Alright, let's look at the, the outer ring as out, uh, first. I mean, I'm already... I, I don't have enough time. I'm just... I'm going with what I have right now. You can use money. Nah, I don't need to. I got it. I mean, I got, I got closer in. I'm not on the innermost yeah, circle, but yeah. yeah, I got it. So for future reference, let's refer to the ring closest to Mario as first, then second, third, fourth, so that we can, like, discuss positioning. Okay, yeah, there's this. definitely, you do way more damage the closer you get, so that's actually really important. How the fuck do I get a plus? Oh, so guess what? Hmm. Um, for my birthday, I was given money to go to Harbor Freight. And so I bought the vacuum pump that I need for but, my vacuum forming but, table. But I was not paying attention. I got rubber binded. Ah, oh, fuck. You don't get to attack if they do that? That's yeah, bullshit. No. Yeah, that's annoying. Um, but I was able to get the vacuum pump I need for my vacuum former that I'm building. Oh, nice. And so... I had change left over, so I'm gonna actually spend it on my father-in-law. Oh, but I'm told it's one of those gifts where, look what I got you, me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm gonna buy him a tabletop belt sander Ooh. with a with a disc sander attachment. Okay. On, on the side. Ah, so fuck, I... there's none that go inwards. Ooh. Oh, what's the best I can do here? If I do that one, and then this, yeah, yeah, that'll do it. Okay. Okay. Bop, and then go, go. Spring, spring. Fuck yeah. Oh man, he's getting real, real naked. He's getting real naked. Oh yeah, when th this fight, like because it took me so long to figure out, just use that. Mm-hmm. And like it took a while, like, it really did. And even then, it was just like, fuck you. Piece of the shit. fucking healing and the rubber bind really make it some bullshit. Yeah. What and specifically was pissing that... you off? Well, he hit me with the rubber bind every fucking turn. Fuck that. That sounds awful. <laughs> I would give up at that point, honestly. Oh, it gets... The, the, the fucking ice elemental is worse. Oh, no. Yeah, you were telling me. Um, that one... Shit. Uh, that one was bad. Do you know I, the boss that nearly made me throw the game away? Like, and it's a digital copy, so it wouldn't have been very easy to do, but, like, there was one that I nearly, like, it would have been the, like, I almost threw my TV across the room, uh, is the penultimate, which is second to last, for those who don't know. Yes, yes. Uh, the penultimate, uh, stationary boss. Fuck, has a, all right, I just gotta go for it. It's uh, an attack that's a one-hit kill. Fuck. Oh god, oh god. No, no. Hold on, I get- I- fuck, I think I can do this a little better. I'm gonna buy a little bit of time, because I think I can kill him this turn. Um... Uh, no you can't. No... There's more after this. Oh boy, okay, um... So you're- you're- you're fine. You'll get him down low enough, but he, uh... has a second form. This oh isn't boy. even his okay. final form. No... That sucks. Last enemies into the air and keeps them there without oh, with a bullet. Blah, blah, blah. That could be fucking sweet. I'm looking at like the the I, I bought new weapons uh, and weapon abilities. So I was looking at the uh, skills. Oh, oh, I should have saved some of that for. Oh, fuck! I think I fucked it up. Me. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think I fucked up this turn. Shit! I think I hit go too soon. Ooh. Here I go. Oh boy, oh, we're going back. We're going back. Fuck, yep, I tripped. Oh boy. Well, it wasn't too bad, but I didn't get to attack, so fuck. Let's find out how this goes. 
Bam. That's... It says a lot that at this point in this game, I've already got like the items that are the best for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm just like, can't use that yet. I have to be like twice the level I'm at right now to get that. Right, right, right. That's how That's fucking uh, Borderlands is, because most of the wep like a lot of the weapons, you have to be a certain level or higher to use. So like uh -huh. a lot of the early game is just like I, I'm running out of inventory space, but I really want to use this when I get to that level. And then when you get to that level, you've got something even for a better. Lower level that's a thousand times better. Exactly. Yeah. Borderlands is all right, you know. It, it depends on which one. I'd say they got progressively better. So by the pre-sequel, that that was genuinely really great. Like I'll yeah. I'll say like if I was gonna play any Borderlands game, um, after I fucking beat the uh, beat Borderlands three with Coco, because we're working on that one, but I'd probably play pre-sequel again, because it's just it it's specifically the platforming because you're on the moon is just so fucking fun because you you can just jet around and use the low gravity and everything and it's it's super satisfying can i say something slightly sacrilegious which is i hate borderlands games oh you've said that before so uh, fuck, hey, stop, i don't hey, like first sit, person sit, 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 gaming hey, hey, sit still yeah, no, no. Uh, uh, like first grab. person gaming in general is right. infuriating to me. Like I any really? Yeah, I don't like it. Fuck! fuck. It, oh. It's, oh god damn it! Get, grab! It. Got him! Fuck! Yeah, right. God damn it! That was just fucking annoying. Oh 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 oh! oh I what? What am I doing? Oh well, well that yet I did it right. <laughs> oh fuck! Well, I got it in one try. That was pretty good. Yeah. Oh, that was really hard though. I, I will say, like, if you had not told me to use the hands first, I probably would have wasted a bunch of time trying to jump on him. <sighs> um, I don't know, it, with me, like, first-person games, I didn't mind them as much on, uh, like, computer for a while, because it's just moving a fucking mouse around, I've done that. And then moving to it on, um, controller... Like, it's it's interesting. It's basically like when you use a mouse, it's like you're pulling wherever you're pointing along because it follows your mouse. But then when you're using a controller, it's more like you're pushing where you're trying to go. And just something about that, like, opposite effect made it so much harder for me to, like, catch on to uh, console FPS controls for a long time. They're not my favorite games, but, like, there's so many fucking games that are first-person now that if you don't like them, I mean, it really shrinks the amount of games, new games that you're able to play. Um, I don't like playing on a keyboard with a mouse yeah. at all. It it's can be uncomfortable, for sure. Unless it's point and click, like, um... I mean, a first person is effectively point and click, but then you're also moving uh, no, 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 like what, what, have... what screen you're using via the um, via the other controls. I'm talking any computer game. If I can't use my controller, I don't like it at all. Like, period. But I, um, well, with first person, it's like... It clearly matter. was designed to be done with a mouse. Like, when you use a controller, it wasn't really until Halo came out that um, controlling an FPS game with a controller was even viable, because Halo did such revolutionary things to make it possible to control a game like that. It doesn't matter to me. I don't like it. Like, mm. it's just not fun. I am absolutely a controller game. No, I'm not one of those that's like... Oh, I don't like computer gaming at all. Because I can play a lot of games on the computer with the controller. Mm. But unless it's a game like Anna's Quest, like uh, the Sierra-style gaming... Right. I do not like computer games that don't let me use a controller. If I have to use a controller or a keyboard and a mouse to play your game, I don't like your game. Like, 
I'm not gonna play it. Hmm. If you don't, like, include some kind of functionality that lets me do other than that, I do not want to play your game. Like, full stop. I mean, like, I can, I understand that, but at the same time, it's like, there's so many games that could not work with a controller. Like, just by design, the, the design is would not be able to fit on a, to a controller or the way the sort of like then i don't um, want to play like... do. well what i'm what i mean is like that's it's it's so limiting to only have controllers even if you do have a unique custom controller the way nintendo always like makes highly revolutionary controllers that are constantly changing even if you make them that pri proprietary it's like the, there's only so much you can really do with that versus um, the keyboard and mouse, which are, which is just highly more versatile because there's just so many more options. Yeah. Like, I understand, but I don't want to play it then. Like, much the same way, like, somebody who's never driven a stick shift in their life doesn't want to drive one of those either. Or anyone who's never driven a car with power steering will never want to drive one without. Of course you don't want to. It's I don't, not what well, you like. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong right there because I've n never done either of those things, but I would absolutely love to try both. Like, you I've, say that, but I want. I know it's going to be difficult. Oh, no, no. It's not that it's difficult. Like, driving stick shift is difficult if you've never done it before. That's true. Uh, the difficult part, like... Once you get the gist of stick shift, mm -hmm. the difficult part is uh, just fucking first gear is always the most pain in the ass part of any new vehicle you've driven. Mm -hmm. Because first gear, you have to hold the clutch at just the right position. Whereas every other gear, you can let off the clutch completely once you're in gear and moving. First gear fucking sucks because it's a sweet spot and it sucks. Once you're used to a vehicle and it's clutch, you're fine. But it's that learning curve of getting used to it. That still, you didn't say anything that dissuaded me. Because I know, I know all that shit is complicated and difficult, yes. but it's like, I still want to. Because once again, now, it was like you were saying earlier, with like, experiences, it's like, why would I not want to try things, for, even if they seem really difficult, even if it seems like something that I might not find fun? Like, I want, I still want to try all of those. Another thing about driving a stick shift mm -hmm. is it's very similar... Like, have you ever driven a riding lawnmower? Yes. It's... You've driven a stick shift. Like, that's pretty much it. Just add another pedal that uh, is neither the brake nor the gas. Right. And that's pretty much... Like, you, you've done it. And so there's not much to... really experience. Driving a vehicle without power steering fucking, however, mm -hmm. is goddamn awful. And that is a fucking... So my dad had this big 60s era Ford pickup that if I hit you with the truck, there's no you left to, like, like it's a fucking tank of a car. Sure. So, I had to drive that thing, and its power steering blew out. Mm -hmm. So, when you drive a car now, you have power steering. I, I am almost willing to bet that anyone listening to this that is not a 50 year old has probably never driven a vehicle that did not have power steering. Maybe. Power steering. I mean, it depends on how old of a car you're able to fucking get. Right. So, power steering, and I actually drove power steering in my Buick before by accident because my vehicle 
the alternator died because I lost the belt mm -hmm. and had to drive it home without power. And so I had no, it was the middle of the night. I had no headlights. I had no, uh, like whatever power the battery had was it for, for the day. And I had to get across town. Right. Uh, so I barely made it home. And my dad's like, there's no way you made it home. You don't have power. I'm like, well, I got here, didn't I? Like, mm -hmm. I didn't push the damn thing. <laughs> But, uh, like, I shouldn't have been able to get home at all. Um, oh, wait. I'm going to shut up for a moment. Let's focus on the game. Yep. I'm going to... I I feel like I'm going to hit another save point before too long, so... That's oh, when I'm going to call it. Oh, let's go for a little bit. You'll know when to call it for the night. Come on, you I keep promise. having you keep keeping me here way longer than I mean to be. Because you keep getting to like the best spots. I, I don't, promise. Again, it's I, like it you're about wait. to have a cutscene. Yes. You're about to have a lot of cutscene that are going to set up the next part of the game. Okay. And it's Well then I will call it after that when I get to a save point. Yes. Uh, you're you're at a point you're gonna want to see is my yeah shit play. what the fucking they hit a hole under a box uh huh god damn it did well, you fall in the hole yes because I was walking along crushing boxes I didn't expect there to be a hole Iggy go down the hole stop this stop this why? Bob, I'm go down the hole. Bob, um, has never seen a hole. How dare you? How dare so, you insinuate this? Have you, have you noticed that Bob, Bob is the most useless fucking sidekick? Like when you actually need a sidekick, they never show up. Like yeah, like he's never there when you need him. I mean, he's just got his memory fun? back, so presumably he might get a little better. Uh, he gets his memory back, yeah. I mean, he just did. Alright. Cutscene. Hold on. Not yet. Go or no, he gets something. new memories, but he does not have his memory back for a while. Hmm, I see. Hey, it's Ollie. Wait, I'm playing a villain, mm -hmm. but I have to report to a superhero for the next part. I think I'm accidentally doing a raid mission, which mm -hmm. I didn't want to really do any of these. It ends now. Open the airlift. Oh, fuck. It's a fucking cabbage. Olivia, no. No, not Olivia. I mean, Luigi was ground up in those fucking gears and he was fine, so I think she's probably okay. I mean... That's a big fucking boulder. And? And it's a cutscene. Like, there were, there have been people, like, there have been toads buried under an entire fucking town in some of these games, and they're still fine. I don't, um, they've, they've set up a world where I'm not really nervous about anybody getting truly hurt, unless they get fucking shredded. Okay, if you say so. I will put, I will not say anything to like ruin that, but people can die, for sure. Yeah, I mean, there are probably ways it can be done, but that d would not have done it. Um, Period, I'm saying it right now, Olivia's fine. She's gonna be, you... she's gonna be upset because she has to be under there for a while, but she's gonna be fine. Oh, no. 
I don't want to spoil anything. Oh, not on stream anyway. I'll spoil it off stream. Mm, no, it's I can wait. Like you well, can just wait. Long... Like I d I'm gonna play the game. Okay. Like. Uh. Wait, where am I going next? Out of mountain. I'll go <sighs> to Shogun Studios, I guess. Uh, no. You go back to Toad Town. You need okay, to go so I gotta go back to Shogun seat. Studios to go back to Toad Town. So. No, do you... Oh, yeah. There's a pipe there, yeah. Um, so what you're gonna do is actually go to, uh... Um... God damn, I'm not prepared for this fucking... God damn. I am not prepared for this battle. Alright. Um, I'll, yeah, find, so, a, I'll well, find a save point in Toad Town so that I don't forget what I was doing. Well, you can save right there at the blue pipe. That well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is I If I do that and I come back, I'm going to forget what I was going to be doing, and I'll think I'm just doing stuff in Shogun Studios. I'd rather go to the place I need to be and save there so that it, I have more of a clue in the future. Yeah. Um... You go save by the dock, that would be a good place to save. Yeah. Coco, what did you share on Twitter saying, what the fuck and oh god? Is this something I actually want to open? Or no, or there's a save going? point right here by the battle lab. I'll just use that one. Well, yes, but you have to go to the dock, so. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, yeah. Uh, da 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 da. Here we go. Uh, is there another save point, or is that the closest one? Because otherwise, it wouldn't matter which one I did. They're both about equidistant. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just... I'll go use that one. Oh, hey. Let me talk to this guy, see if I missed any of the hearts. Hey, look. Well, like, I'm I missed not going to comment on, not going to comment on the first thing this guy was talking about and the thing Coco sent us. I will, will say, marijuana should be free. Give me some free weed. I could use that right about now. Mm. Oh, apparently my escrow is at 1,329 in this game now. That's good, I guess. Is that good? I don't know. I mean, Fucking we're playing the game. I feel like if it matters, they would have. Oh, it's you. Kanye West. Kanye West said it, marijuana should be free. And I that mean, everyone that has a baby gets a million dollars. Um, he I mean, I don't know president. about I don't know about the baby thing necessarily, but yeah, why not? Marijuana, like. You should just be allowed to fucking... If not free, they should just sell it like any other fucking plant. Just sell the seeds at goddamn... Right alongside the pumpkin and squash you find at the damn... The damn Lowe's hardware store, wherever. And then you just go and you take it and you grow yourself some damn oh marijuana. Oh my fucking god. It'll cost you about 20 cents a packet. Coco, I, I need you to know that I hate this word that you sent us. Ah, oh god. I hate it. Let me look. Hold on. I fucking hate it. If you're if you're gonna distract, then let's figure this out. So the term. I want you to read it out loud. Hold Andy. on. The term. <clears throat> Semi bisexual. Adjective. Someone who is bisexual, but with attraction to only one gender. That, if you are curious, just equates to heterosexual. So, yeah. fucking what? Or gay. Slash or slash gay, slash. I guess. It's not bisexual. Period. Yeah, it's What it is is biphobic. But... <sighs> it's certainly... Well... Is it biphobic? I don't know. I'd have to think about that longer to determine whether it's biphobic. What it definitely is, is pointless. So, I don't... What, what's the need? What's the need... Words words only exist to fit the meaning that the, they are needed for. So if they their need is not found, then why? 
Why? All right, I'm gonna end it here for tonight. We'll uh, we'll be back with some DC Universe Online on Tuesday and uh, Thursday, Thursday as well. And then yep. we'll be back uh, next Friday, Saturday, maybe a Sunday. I'm gonna decide whether I want to do Sundays going forward. Since it is like a work night, so it might be less traffic. We'll see. But definitely Friday, Saturday, we'll play more of this game, Origami King. So please oh, this sucks. come back around for those. Thanks for watching. If you're watching now, in the past, or in the future through the past broadcast tab, or in the archive on YouTube, which is down below on the browser version. You'll also find my personal YouTube and my Twitter, where I tweet out whenever I go live, along with other fun things. I don't tweet myself super often, but I do retweet a lot of fun things, I think, anyways. You can see a sampling of that down below. Um, also, please consider following if you have not. I would greatly appreciate it, because it does help the channel, and it's free for you to do. So, it would definitely be much, much appreciated if you would follow, uh, as well as subscribe to any of those things. Follow on Twitter. All the different business that you might do. And you can also find the schedule down there or on the channel uh, channel page specifically. It's more like it's actually set up by time and stuff, so it's more specific. I'd say check there first, but they're both gonna say about the same info and subject to change, but I'll update it as I change. Andrew, any last words for the people? Um, you're bound to lose control when the rubber band starts to jam. Um, before you leave, are we going to raid the viewers over to another show? I don't, I don't know which one to do it to. Uh... Do Bunny Bennett! She's good. I get, is She's she, streaming right now. Is she streaming? Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, how the fuck do I raid? I don't know. Let me see if I can do it with moderator view. Yeah, I mean, you could have just said this after we went off rather than have this awkward ending. It. So good night, folks. We're, we'll we'll, we'll rage you, you over in just a minute. <laughs>